National Football League. Today, from Texas Stadium, it's the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Dallas Cowboys. Brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Mazda Cars and Trucks, including the all-new Mazda MPV. And by new Right Guard Sports Stick from Gillette. Anything less would be uncivilized. Last Sunday, Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City turns out to be a nightmare for the Cincinnati Bengals. Nick Lowry kicks this field goal, his fifth of the game, and Kansas City comes from nine points back to beat the Bengals 31-28. So today in Dallas, the Bengals look for more of that big play offense, like this connection, Boomer Esiason to Eddie Brown. For the Cowboys, Kevin Sweeney makes his second start. Two weeks ago, he was red hot as he threw three touchdowns in a second-half rally that just fell shy to the Giants. Week number 12 of the regular season, the Cincinnati Bengals thinking division championship, the Dallas Cowboys thinking next year. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jim Donovan, along with former Bengals quarterback Kenny Anderson. And you know you have two teams playing against each other today that have to be in bad moods. First of all, Cincinnati. Ken, they let one slip away last week in Kansas City, and the Central Division Championship still isn't put away. You know, although the Bengals lead by a game after losing to a 1-8 and eight at that point Kansas City Chiefs team, I think the Bengals feel they have to win today. It's almost like it's slipping by them, and they can't afford a loss to the Dallas Cowboys with a 2-9 and nine record. So Houston and Cleveland are still right behind the Bengals. As far as the Cowboys, Cowboys are concerned they've lost seven games in a row and last Sunday night boy it can't get any worse 43 3 they lost to the Vikings so they got a lot to prove here today well you know they've been embarrassed the last couple of weeks they've been out of the game early they've gotten blown out and I think you know Tom Landry likes this football team it's a very young football team they're preparing for the future so a game like today against Cincinnati can do a lot to build for next year head coach Sam Weish of the Bengals did an awful lot of work with special teams this week they had a punt blocked in the loss of Kansas City that turned the game around. They fumbled on a kickoff. They didn't block very well on special teams, so they did a lot of extra work this week. One of the things that they did is they worked live on their punt protection. Sam White's offered a $50 bonus to anybody that could get in and block one of Scott Fulhag's punts. Uh, nobody got in, so maybe the punt team is short up this week. Ricky Dixon got close, but Sam said not close enough to win the 50 bucks. He tipped it. He lost on a technicality. <laughs> this kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser the king of beers. Lee Johnson ready to kick it away as the Cowboys win the toss and have accepted to receive Daryl Clack and Cornell Burbage are back deep and we're underway on Sunday number 12. Burbage two yards deep in his end zone and here he comes. He's got a little crease. Out to the 35, out to the 37 yard line and Barney Bussey runs him out of bounds. Here comes Kevin Sweeney and the Dallas Cowboys offense goes like this. Herschel went over 1,000 yards last week. Todd Fowler gets the start at fullback for the injured Newsom. Michael Irvin, a rookie out of Miami, their top draft choice at wide receiver. And this offensive line that you'll see coming up must protect Kevin Sweeney a lot better. He was eaten up against the Minnesota Vikings last week. A 37-yard return by Burbage. First and 10 Cowboys at their own 37-yard line. We need a pass for the rookie, Urban. Incomplete. So they go big on play number one. Lewis Phillips was on the coverage, and they say that Sweeney has a beautiful long ball touch. Can really lay it in there, as we saw it there. The front three for the Bengals. A little nicked up, especially at the ends. McClendon and Scow limping around on bad ankles. The linebackers, Reggie Williams playing in a, yet another season and having a good year. And the Bengals secondary. Watch for 33, David Fulcher. He's a powerhouse at strong safety. Up close to 240 pounds. We have an injured player down, Nate Newton, the left guard of the Cowboys, down, and they're checking out his right leg. Well, that's an area where the Cowboys can't afford any injuries. They've been nicked up there a little bit in the past. They're a very young offensive line. They only average about 2.4 years of experience in the National Football League. And so to lose a guy like Nate Newton, one of their big offensive linemen, 314 pounds, would really hurt this afternoon. They've got a couple of 300-pounders on that line. Kevin Gogan. The right tackle is over 300 pounds, too. And the rookie at left tackle, Dave Waddell, out of Boston College. Boy, did he get a lesson last week against Dolman of the Vikings. That's where a lot of that pressure on Sweeney came from on that left side. 
Well, you know, it's, uh, it's a situation where the offensive line, it's very difficult for him as we try to see what happened. His, his knee just kind of gets caught in there, and it looks like that's probably what it is, but uh, certainly the offensive line is going to be the key for Kevin Swinney, a very young quarterback. They need to give him time to throw, not time to establish himself this afternoon, gain a little bit of confidence. So Newton leaves, hobbling on that right leg, and coming in at left guard will be 63, Glenn Titansor. He's out of Brigham Young, 6'4", 275 pounds. Kevin Sweeney, the numbers on 88. A great second half against the Giants two weeks ago. A nightmare first start against the Vikings last Sunday night here at Texas Stadium. And it's second down at 10. That's Thornton Chandler, the tight end, now moving in tighter on the right side of the line of scrimmage. Fowler in motion. Herschel Walker to the 40 yards and he ends up with three yards and it will be third down at seven nfc versus afc and the afc having a good season 20 to 16. of course that's got a lot to do with teams like buffalo that's nine and one the bengals eight and three so it looks like the afc coming up a little bit this year it'll be third down and long now for the vikings the cowboys 41 and 20 the best interconference records but they've beat up on a lot of teams over the years yeah they have not this year, though. Third down and seven. Fowler down in a slot on that bottom of your screen. And Chandler, the tight end, goes out wide. Sweeney on third and long. That's Michael Irvin. And the rookie carries into Cincinnati territory out at the 46-yard line, chased by Lewis Phillips. So it's the second time that Sweeney has gone to Irvin. And on pass number two, they connect. Boys, it nice to have him back in the lineup for the Dallas Cowboys as we watch him here going one-on-one, man-to-man coverage against Lewis Phillips. Takes him into the inside, breaks out. Good timing by Kevin Sweeney there as he gets the ball to the outside for the first time. And I think good pass protection is one of the keys. There's the Bengals. Tim Crumroy going up the middle. He just doesn't give up that bull rusher in the middle. So Sweeney took a lick, but unloaded. And a 15-yard pass play and a first down to the Cincinnati 45. Fowler and Walker make up the backfield. Herschel gets the carry. And look at him dive through down to the Cincinnati 40-yard line. He'll end up with close to six yards. You know, Herschel Walker is the offense for the Dallas Cowboys. He carries the ball about 84% of the time in the running game as we watch Herschel Walker from the end zone shot here. But the Dallas Cowboys do doing a good job. You see Tim Crumright getting double teamed, pushed by there. And Herschel Walker just is so strong. One guy can't bring him down, breaks an arm tackle. He has great forward body lean in the running game. Both Carl Zander and Jim Scow had a chance to get Walker, but he dipped right underneath them. Second down and five at the 40-yard line. Ray Alexander splits out wide left. Urban to the bottom of your screen. Walker again. Inside the 40, down to the 37-yard line. The defensive end, 72. Skip McClendon gets up off the pack. Herschel came into today's game with 1,019 yards rushing, and he said, I'm not having a good year. And that's the first time in his career, surprisingly, he's been over 1,000 yards. But one of the great running backs in the National Football League, if the Dallas Cowboys this afternoon can establish the running game, that's going to do a lot to take pressure off of Kevin Sweeney and having to throw the football. The injured Danny White checking over the play selection there. Tom Landry off to Danny's right. People wondering if this might be it for Danny White, at least in Dallas in his NFL career. Right now, you're looking at Kevin Sweeney. He might be the future. Third and two, Walker. Oh, he didn't get to the sticks. Good defensive play. Tim Crumry stretched it across, and then Eric Thomas finished the playoff, but give it to 69 right there. Tim Crumry, the Bengals' leading tackler, which is surprising for a nose man. He just doesn't give up. He's off the ball. He reads the play. He tries to sprint to the outside, takes a good angle on Herschel Walker, and helps get in on the play. But Tim Crumry is one of those guys. You don't expect your nose man to lead the team in tackle. He is Mr. Hustle for Cincinnati. Mike Saxon is into punt. That's what Crumry says about himself. He beat all the odds. And that's right. You can't measure heart or desire. Ira Hillary is back deep on the punt, if indeed they do punt on fourth down and two crowd did not want to see the punting team come on maybe they have a reason when you're two and nine and not going anywhere well what had happened there looked like dallas maybe trying to draw the bengals offside with that last minute shift in the punting team and they don't mind taking the delay of game here it puts them five yards back is a little bit better shot to put it inside the 20 for saxon let's see if the bengals are going to take the penalty they do Gordon McCarter, your referee, checking in with his crew the first time today as Sam White's now 
will watch Saxon step back and punt the ball from inside his 45-yard line. I think one of the reasons Sam White took the penalty there last week, they saw one and eight team go for it on fourth and inches when you don't expect them to. Here they don't want to give Dallas any options. Saxon will go straight up in the air. Hillary, fair catch call for. And into the end zone. Hit it about the three and then bound it out. So it will be first and ten at the 20-yard line when we come back to Texas State. It's been a very good offense this year. It wasn't on the field enough last week in Kansas City. They want to be out on the field a lot more. Watch for this kid, 30, Icky Woods, the rookie out of UNLV. Very powerful runner. And the offensive line, and they have been the key. Oh, no question. Uh, 38 years of experience between the offensive line, led by Anthony Munoz. He's been to seven straight Pro Bowls. It was a 42-yard punt by Saxon, but it goes for a touchback to the 20-yard line. Here come the Bengals. McGee to the bottom. Of your screen, 85, as we look at Boomer Sison, quite critical of his team's effort last week in Kansas City. Roll out. Looking for McGee. Incomplete. Excellent coverage by 23, Robert Williams. And we'll check out the Cowboys' defense, and they get off to a good start on play number one. This is a 4-3 defense. Rare around the NFL these days. Ed Jones having an exceptional season at age 37. The yep. linebackers, Burton, Lockhart, and Cobb, and the secondary, and you just saw Robert Williams go stride for stride. Good corners, fast cornerbacks, and they'll need that speed today. But lack of interceptions from their secondary. The Cowboys only have seven as a team, which is the fewest in the National Football League. Second down and ten. Brooks and Woods behind Esiason. Scoreless early moments here at Texas Stadium. Brooks down the line in motion. A lot of time, and he threw it behind Tim McGee, and on the coverage was Ron Burton. Let's check in on Sunday, number 12 around the NFL. The Buffalo Bills can clinch today with a win. Cleveland jumps out 3-0 over Pittsburgh. Remember, they're behind the Bengals by a game. The Bears on the board with a touchdown. No score at the Metrodome. Check that. The Browns are behind two games to the Bengals. Houston's behind by one as we round out the scoreboard there. Detroit Green Bay scoreless as is Seattle Kansas City. Third down and ten. As Esiason delivered right behind the ear of McGee not, and he was open as he had a linebacker Burton covering. Eddie Brown in motion. Again a lot of time but nobody open and it ends up as uh, Jim Jeffcoat getting in there and getting Esiason down by the ankles. That's a coverage sack, really. There's no question about it. Boomer Esiason had a lot of protection. There was nobody open downfield as the Cowboys play man-to-man -man coverage. The Cowboys have a great defensive line, put a lot of pressure on quarterbacks. Bengals offensive line did a nice job. There was just nobody for Boomer to go to. So Boomer over to the sideline talking with both Eddie Brown and Tim McGee as you watch it again and watch Esiason. He's in that pocket, and he's okay. A lot of time. And he just tries to scramble up in there, and Jeffco gets him around the ankles for the sack. Scott Fullhag into punt. Kelvin Martin takes it at his own 40. And that's pretty good special teams coverage there. Solomon Wilcox is down to make the tackle for the Bengals as Martin carries over the 40-yard line. Two-yard return on a 40-yard punt. Cowboys up to bat when we come back in a scoreless tie. Early moments at Texas Stadium and already a better start for the Cowboys on this Sunday, even though it's scoreless. But I'm surprised both teams have really opened it up. Well, they have, I think. Surprisingly, with Kevin Sweeney, the first play of the game, he tries to go deep. I think they want to loosen that Bengals defense up as much as they can. And the Bengals went three passes, all incomplete, three and out. Actually, on the third one, Asias had tried to throw and never got it off as Jeff Coach came in and finally got it. Sweeney now up to the line of scrimmage. First to ten, the Cowboys with good field position. At their own 42-yard line. Chandler down the line in motion, the tight end. They go to Herschel Walker, and he's tied up right away. And then spins off and gets a couple of yards. So you see, he's never really down until he's finally on the turf. Fulcher and White come in and make the tackle. And here's one of the big matchups of the day. Tim Crumry, the veteran nose tackle against the young center, Bob White. 
and White doing a pretty good job staying into Tim Crumry there. And that's about as good as you're going to do on Tim Crumry. Incidentally, an injury report from the Dallas sideline. Nate Newton, the left guard, went out with a right ankle sprain. They're icing it down. They don't know if he will return as we watch Tim Crumry on that Cincinnati defense. Second down and six to go. Walker turned a one-yard gain into a four-yard gain. Not this time, though. They were sitting right in the middle of the line waiting for him. Jim Scow is there, and you know 69 Crumry will be there, and there he is. You know, talking with some of the Bengals' defensive coaches, he said, this is like coaching a high school game. He said, there's one guy you got to stop. That's Herschel Walker. As we say, Herschel Walker has done a lot for the Dallas Cowboys offense. He's over 1,000 yards rushing. Receiving-wise, he's close to 500 yards with 42 catches. He only has one rushing touchdown on the season, though. Which is surprising. The Cowboys as a team only have five. Well, they got no gain on that last play. Four wide receivers in for the Cowboys on third and six. Incomplete. Lewis Phillips on the coverage. Coming in was Leo Barker, a linebacker, was in the backfield. They tried to get it to Michael Irvin, and that's been the guy that Sweeney's been picking out so far today. Leo Barker did a nice job coming around the corner there, forcing Sweeney to throw the ball early. Sweeney right over to the sideline of the Brain Trust. Landry, Pelleur, and White all over there. And Mike Saxon is in for his second punt. Number one was a good one, but he didn't get it out inside the 20-yard line. It went into the end zone. And Ira Hillary... Stands back deep for the Bengals. It's a low kick. And Hillary makes the catch knee level and brings it out to the 22-yard line. Tackle made by Steve Diossi. Tom Landry watches. Nine minutes to go in the first quarter. Those were the comments of Boomer Esiason. And after the... 31-28 loss. Some guys can get away with saying that. How did this team react? Well, I, I think Boomer is no question the leader of this ball club. He's having a good year, so you can say things like that. Well, you, you can back it up out on the field. It's okay to pop off like that. Second possession for the Bengals. Coleman, the tight end in motion. James Brooks, his first carry of the day, goes out over to the 25-yard line. There's a flag down. Let's go around the NFL right now. As Brooks goes back to the huddle. Still scoreless. And the Browns on a Matt Barr field goal. Lead over Pittsburgh, 3-0. Browns trying to shed a two-game losing streak. Chicago with a touchdown, 7-0. That's a big game for Indianapolis. Pitch, They've the won ball, five in a row. Five-yard penalty, still first down. The Lions with their new coach today, 3-0. Jump out to the lead as Daryl Rogers was fired. Ed Tutal Jones lined up in the neutral zone that time and gave the Bengals an easy five yards. First down at five now. After the penalty on the Cowboys, they had 15 penalties in the loss last Sunday night to the Vikings. Wide open, Eddie Brown. And this is when he becomes a big problem for a defense. He can run so well after he catches the ball, and he ran it well there down to the 46-yard line of Dallas and out of bounds. You know, Eddie Brown averaging over 23 yards per catch. Uh, of course, leads the NFL in receiving yards. You're going to see a lot of man-to-man -man coverage by the Dallas defensive secondary. Here, Boomer Esiason has plenty of time to throw, loose coverage. Eddie Brown is most effective running the football as he breaks the tackle and takes it up the sidelines for big yardage. 26 yards. Downs drives him out. And the Bengals finally get their passing game on track. First and 10, Cincinnati at the Dallas 46-yard line. Icky Woods in the backfield, the lone back, and he gets the ball. A flag goes down as Woods backs into a bunch of Dallas tacklers inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. Ron Burton and Eugene Lockhart in on the tackle. And we'll check out the call been a very good pick, Icky Woods. Of course, he led the NCAA in rushing last year's come in nine rushing touchdowns. Well, just when we go to pay him a compliment, <laughs> he went illegal motion. Five yards coming up on Icky Woods and the Bengals. A reminder to our viewers that we will be selecting the Budweiser Most Valuable Player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. Sam White signaling out something. 
First down at 15 now as the penalty brings the Bengals back into their own backyard at the 49. Riggs the tight end in motion. Good play action fake. And Esiason throws the ball away. I don't know who it was intended for as he got nailed down to the ground on a blitz. It was Gary Cobb coming from the right side and got in on Boomer. Well, they were trying to go play action pass and get the ball deep to uh, Timmy McGee. The Bengals are a great play action play team here as Gary Cobb comes in. He's going to put the shot on Boomer Esiason. That's one of those plays down the field the wide receiver tries to read. If there's a free safety, I'll take it to the corner. If there's no free safety, I'll take it to the post. That time, a little miscommunication, obviously, because Boomer Esiason couldn't stand there and look any longer. They're a very good play action or run action fake team. That's because the Bengals are second in the league in rushing the football. Second down and 15. Coleman in motion. And a sweep to Brooks. Oh, a good run by Brooks, and he might break it. Touchdown, Bengals! James Brooks with the explosive play taken to the outside and going for the touchdown. James Brooks is averaging 5.3 yards per carry, which leads the National Football League. And here we look at the replay of it. Joe Walter gets into too tall. He escapes to the inside. He's got a pretty good angle, it looks like. But James Brooks just outruns him to the outside, makes a move to the inside, and he is history. James Brooks with great speed, and nobody is going to catch him as the Bengals take the early lead. 51-yard touchdown run by James Brooks. And there he goes. I don't know if he got touched. I don't, I don't believe he did. Good blocking by the Bengals. Extra point by Jim Breach is good. James Brooks with a big touchdown run, and the Bengal offense connects and leads 7-0. James Brooks' seventh rushing touchdown of the season is a big one. He goes 51 yards with some superb blocking, and the Bengals lead 7-0. That's the drive. The big play, so it isn't a long drive, is it? And it didn't take much time. Well, the Bengals have been a big play offense all year long. You think of it in the passing game at that time, James Brooks just explodes for that touchdown run. Lee Johnson set to kick it away. Black and Burbage back deep. Black was the closest to your screen. And he runs up to take a short kick. Darrell Clack out over the 25 to the 28-yard line. Swinney back on the field, and let's watch James Brooks go. It all starts, there's Rodney and Pullman in motion. Here's a good block up inside by Stanley Wilson. You see Rodney Holman get it right, right there in your picture, gets a good block on the outside. Too tall, can't catch James Brooks. Now watch who's going to come into the picture at the top of your screen. It's Anthony Munoz right there with the crushing block that springs James Brooks for the distance. Anthony Munoz came all the way from the left side of the formation to make that block. What a beautiful block that was. First and 10, Dallas trailing 7 0. They have the ball out at their own 28 yard line. Sweeney, and it is caught by Doug Cosby, the tight end. It looked like it was intended for Fowler, the fullback coming out of the backfield, went over his head, and there is Cosby coming and making the catch. Well, two receivers in the same area, but obviously Doug Cosby was the one that it was intended to, as he's the all-time Cowboys leading receiver among their tight ends. And a good confidence builder for Kevin Sweeney to come out and hit that pass on first down. Cosby checks out. Seven-yard pickup, second down and three. If you watch something, though, compare Boomer Esiason faking to his running backs and Sweeney setting up a play action fake. He just did it on the last play and it didn't really fool too many people. I think that's because he's so anxious to unload the ball. Urban in motion. Second and three. He could run for the first down and does. Out of bounds into the Bengal bench at the 43 yard line chased out by leon white and that's what tom landry likes about sweeney the mobility well and they like to move him around in the pocket a little bit to take advantage of his quickness get him outside i think he likes to throw the football on the run that time was a good design play he's got the option to run or pass which is nice to put him in a situation like that yeah dallas has been very close to winning a number of games look at that heartbreak in the last couple of minutes i think that comes with being a young football team a lot of penalties turnovers at crucial points of the game First and 10 after the scramble by Sweeney. Like a power eye formation, and then they shift out of that. And Herschel Walker gets up close to the 45-yard line, and he stopped there. Carl Zander is in on the pack. Joe Kelly there, too. 
Now the Oilers jump out 7-0 over Phoenix after losing a heartbreaker themselves last week in Seattle. Houston's only a game back of these Bengals. Cleveland's winning, so it's important that Cincinnati wins here today. Chicago now laying it on Tampa Bay 14-0. Indianapolis, Minnesota still scoreless. And the other games. Kansas City, after their win last week over these Bengals, jump out 7-0. And the Lions holding on to a field goal lead. Walker got two on first down. And it's second down and eight. 7 nothing. Bengals lead on a 51-yard touchdown run by James Brooks. Sweeney to Irvin. Incomplete. Fly goes down. They're going to get Eric Thomas on some tight coverage. And the helmet comes off, pleading his case, but pass interference on Thomas. Eric Thomas not happy about that call. And you're never going to change the officials' minds in a call like that, though. And we're going to look at the replay of it. Eric Thomas appears to have pretty good coverage, pretty good position right now as Irvin makes the plant, went through him to try to get to the ball, although maybe that ball couldn't have been caught, though. I was just going to say to you, was it a catchable ball? It looked high to me, but I think it was one of those close ranges where it's not obviously over his head. Let's Here take one more look. Now watch Ken right here. He's going to go up, and this one is way over his head. Whoa. Close call. The penalty gives him a first and 10 on the interference call at the 44. And Herschel Walker finds a crease. His best running play of the day down to the 38-yard line. Joe Kelly drags along with Walker, but Herschel carried him for the yardage and a good first down play. And Herschel Walker only needs a crease to run the football. Let's see if we can see the wide receivers playing a big part in this game. Here, Irvin comes in looking for a block on David Fulcher. Gets into him. That's not bad. Fulcher's 240 pounds for Irvin to come in and try to get a block on. Seven yards for Herschel. Second down and three at the 37 of Cincinnati. Irvin and Alexander, the wide receivers. Walker, the lone back. He throws for the tight end. Folsom. And he goes out at the 30-yard line. Solomon Wilcox, the safety, comes up to stop the tight end. They've used three tight ends already in this game. Cosby, Folsom, and Chandler, who started. And that time they're playing with two tight ends, two wide receiver, and only Herschel Walker in the game. That time a formation where there is no strength or weakness to the offensive formation. He just throws away from the strength of the Bengals' defense. It's a first down now at the 30-yard line. So Sweeney directing the team nicely here on their third drive of the game. Five minutes, ten seconds to go, first quarter. And it's Herschel Walker down to the 26-yard line. Xander, Wilcox, and Tim Crumrise leaning and getting up off the path. <laughs> and here we're going to see Tim Crumrise in the middle once again as he works against the interior of the Dallas Cowboy line. He just is so strong. Men are into him, blocking him. He's still got enough strength to get to the ball carry and get in on the help of the tackle. Ball down to the 26-yard line. Four yards for Herschel Walker. And it's been a meeting of Walker and Crumry a lot here in the first 11 minutes of this game. Second and six. A fake. When he better get rid of that one. And he does down at the 20-yard line. The Bengals saying that he grounded the ball. No flag thrown. Or was he in the grass, were they claiming? The Bengals coming with the blitz on that, so they're going to be playing man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary and pretty good coverage. Here we're going to see David Fulcher, or there's Michael Irvin going off the line. Lewis Phillips trying to get over there. Pretty good coverage. Allowed the, the blitz of the Bengals to get in on Sweeney. Jason Buck and Carl Zander were the guys that wrapped up Sweeney when he delivered the ball. And there wasn't a cowboy in sight. That's what the Bengals were saying. Third down and six. And he threw the ball behind Michael Irvin. Good coverage again by Lewis Phillips. Again, Irvin had a step on Phillips early, but they couldn't get him the ball on time. Waited for the crossing pattern to clear, and by that time, Phillips had closed up and covered Irvin on that play. Sweeney back over to the sideline. A good drive was moving so well, and then they just unplugged themselves. Well, you know, that's been the story of the Dallas Cowboys all year long. They have trouble converting on third downs. Uh, they're about eighth in the NFC in their third down conversion percentage. It's a 44-yard field goal attempt for Roger Ruzik. 
the longest of the season 50 yards that came last Sunday night against the Vikings right here at Texas Stadium Steve Pallor to hold and the Cowboys trying to get on the board and they are there 44 yard field goal by Roger Ruzik and it's 7-3 now Cincinnati with the lead 4-11 left to go in the first quarter well, Ruzik's now made his last six field goals in a row I, I think that's a nice situation for the Dallas Cowboys where they can go down and get points in the first quarter. You know, especially for Kevin Sweeney, a tough situation for him today. Tom Landry has said that if he doesn't get off to a good start, he may get yanked in favor of Steve Floor. He may rotate quarterbacks in and out during the game. So I think that does a lot for the, the boost the, uh, the confidence of Kevin Sweeney. Cincinnati leading the AFC Central Division. But remember, as you look at the 8-3 and three mark, remember at one point, they were 6-0, and oh, and they had a big lead over Houston and Cleveland. But now, especially Houston's right in the hunt. And remember, they have to play later on this year in Houston. Well, you know, the Bengals have lost three out of the last five after that 6-0 and oh start and uh, lost their last three games on the road. So it's uh, a situation where the Bengals can't afford to let things slip away from them. And you know, they had a lot of those Central Division games. They've had all of them so far, really, at home. That's you know, exactly right. had them at Riverfront Stadium where they have not lost this year. And they're calling Houston now the house of pain, a very difficult <laughs> place to win. And a lot of teams can attest to that. Phoenix is in there today. And Houston, as we saw in our 10-minute ticker, jumped out. 7-0. Houston will be right here at Texas Stadium and on NBC this coming Thursday on Thanksgiving Day to take on the Cowboys in the Battle of Texas. And we've just received word that wide receiver Ray Alexander has a bruised shoulder. Uh, he should be back later on. Stanford Jennings and Ira Hillary back deep to take the kickoff of Rusek. Jennings broke one last week for 98 yards and a touchdown. And it's Stanford Jennings from his four. Good coverage by the Cowboys. Loose football. And they say that Jennings was already down. Tackle made by Steve Diossi. And also in there on the coverage was Mark Whalen. And Garth Jacks. And there was a fumbled kickoff returned by the Bengals last week that let Kansas City kick the winning field goal. And here's Stanford Jennings, as you said, Buster won 98 yards, takes it up in the middle. There's the hit. The ground caused the ball to pop out. Of course, the ground in the National Football League cannot be the cause of a fumble. First and 10 now, Cincinnati at the 21 yard line, leading 7 3. Icky Woods. And a nice run on first down for Icky Woods. Out close to the 29-yard line. Chased down by Michael Downs and by Eugene Lockhart. And good job by the Bengals offensive line allowing Icky Woods to get to the corner. And see, we're going to take another look at it. Boomer Sice is going to really have to stretch to get the ball. But there's Anthony Munoz on the left side on Jeff Coat. Gets him down on the ground. And that's what gave Icky Woods a chance to turn the corner. Second down at two, eight yards on first down for Icky Woods. It's Brooks and Woods in the backfield. And Woods heading out in motion. Gonna go to Brooks. And there he goes again. James Brooks to the midfield stripe and out of bounds as Joe Walter looks as though he sealed a big hole for him around that right side. Just a gaping hole for James Brooks to run through as he takes it up inside. We'll watch it again. Boomer Esaias is sprinting to his left. James Brooks goes back to the right, but there's Joe Walter on Ed Tall jones Gets him to the outside. There's the point of attack there. Eddie Brown trying to get a block, and James Brooks with the speed to turn the corner. And finally, discretion is the better part of valor. I'll take it out of bounds. Good job, Max Montoya, Joe Walter, right at the point of attack, giving James Brooks the chance to get started. 21 yards on that run by Brooks. Here's Icky Woods. Well, this time, Joe Walter can't get the block down. And Ed Tuttle Jones comes back fighting and storming mad, and he tosses Icky Woods down for a, a loss on the play, probably of two yards. Well, they ran right at Jones and said, we'll try it again. And that time, he just made a great play on Joe Walter, playing off the block, making the tackle. Here he is. He's isolated on Joe Walter. He comes in there, just does a good job with his hands and fighting off the block. Maybe that's when Icky Woods should have tried to take up inside when Joe Walters had that inside position. Good play by Jones. 37 years old and having a fine season. Ed Tuttle Jones, a loss of one, second down, 11. Eddie Brown down the line in motion for the Bengals. 
Esiason, and Eddie Brown cannot make the fingertip catch at the 37-yard line. He was wide open. Let's go around the league right now as we go back to the scoreboard on Sunday, number 12. Houston still leading, and the Browns have added a touchdown. 10-0 now over Pittsburgh. The Bengals to their attack offense. Icky Woods makes the catch. There's a flag down at the 45 at the 44-yard line and tackled by Jeff Coat. As the Bengals went quickly to their attack offense, no huddle right up to the line of scrimmage. Let's finish up our business now with the 10-minute ticker. Tampa Bay on the board with a field goal, and Minnesota with a field goal themselves, leading Indianapolis 3-0. Kansas City and Detroit, your leaders in those games. Look at the AFC West. Denver playing New Orleans today. Seattle losing that game. And the Raiders 6-5. Six 6-5 and five. Six and five is your magic number record around the NFL these days. Here's a quick kick by Esiason on fourth down and short yardage. And he puts it out of bounds at the 22-yard line. How about that? Boomer getting a little extra pay today. Well, the Bengals pulling out all pages of their playbook this afternoon. And uh, I couldn't tell if that ball might have been tipped a little bit. But trying to do that, there's nobody back to return the punt for Dallas in a situation like that when you've got your quarterback in the game. You just try to, to get that uh, get the punt back inside the 20-yard line as we take another look at it. You know, if it did tip anybody, it might have tipped his own man on the <laughs> way out because he was very close to one of his blockers in front of him. 7-3. Bengals with the lead. 2-0-2 left. First quarter here at Texas Stadium. And Dallas with the ball at the 22-yard line. Kelvin Martin checks into the lineup. Dallas goes with four wide receivers. Alexander to the top of the screen. Here comes Herschel. A first down out to the 35-yard line. Herschel Walker just cruising through would-be Bengals tacklers. Well, the Cowboys spread them out with three wide receivers in the game. Put Herschel Walker there and good hole up the middle. You see both the offside linemen pulling. Now Herschel Walker sees the hole, cuts it up in there, breaks one tackle, spins, another man hits him. He is just so tough to bring down. Great strength. Here's the quick kick by Boomer Esiason again. Now watch. Get to that. Oh, yeah, that was clean. It just sounded funny. <laughs> First and 10, Sweeney going up top and big for Irvin. Complete at the 25 yard line. Lewis Phillips and Urban stride for stride. That was excellent coverage. It was. Lewis Phillips does a good job. Did you notice how high that ball went in the air when, three, when Sweeney threw it? Lewis Phillips again, good coverage. Stride for stride. The ball a little bit underthrown, but he kept it to the outside. If only, only one person's got a shot to make it, and that of course is Urban. That's on your team. You don't get the interception. Boy, he arcs that ball in there. Good strong arm by Sweeney. Second down at 10. Cowboys with it at the 35-yard line. Kelvin Martin back in at a wide receiver spot. It's to Herschel Walker. Reggie Williams gets him down by the ankles and knocks him down because if he had gotten by Williams, I think he had that corner. Well, Reggie Williams, one of the elder statesmen on the Bengals' defense in his 13th year, did a nice job playing off a blocker, stringing it out and making the tackle. So Reggie Williams from Dartmouth back over to the sideline. Herschel Walker into the Cowboy huddle. They've got problems now. Third down and 11. It's tough to convert on third down and 10 all the time. You need to make yards on first down. Obviously, that's the biggest cliche in football. You need to do something on first down, but I think it's very... You know, appropriate that the, the Cowboys just are struggling on offense. You need to do something early. Put yourself in third and short. They're in a passing formation. Four wide receivers. Everett Gay comes in. Ray Alexander. Martin is in. And Burbage is in. Third and 11. Here's the blitz from the outside. Ray Horton was coming in there. And David Fulcher almost picks it off at the 25-yard line. Boy, was Horton close to knocking down Sweeney. Well, the Bengals committed to the blitz here. And he goes through clean as David Fulcher was back there helping out in the coverage. David Fulcher having a great year for the Cincinnati Bengals. And here you see Jim Scout taking the outside. 
And there's Ray Horton as he puts a big lick on Kevin Sweeney. Saxon punts. And this one goes off the side of his foot. And it's a pretty good cowboy roll after that because that could have been a disaster the way that thing left his foot. And it's still rolling. Now hoping for one of those Texas Stadium <laughs> wins to blow it dead at the 21-yard line. And it finally stops. Well, they were down low. They may have been blowing themselves. Only three seconds left to go in the first quarter as Cincinnati leads 7-3. Coming up at halftime, scores and highlights from around the league on this Sunday, number 12, as we have big games going on with a lot of playoff possibilities. Well, they say if you're going to get into the playoffs, you need to win in November. Uh, a big month around the league for teams to set up for their playoff potential. Incidentally, the Cowboys have not won since September. They went 0 for October, and unless they come up with a win here today or Thanksgiving Day, against the Oilers they'll go for 0 for November too. Eddie Brown late coming in to the Bengal offensive lineup you just saw him racing across picked up the play I think when he ran by Boomer last play of the first quarter incomplete to Chris Collinsworth at the 30 yard line and that does it for quarter number one here at Texas Stadium James Brooks with a 51 yard touchdown run has the Bengals in the lead over the Cowboys, 7-3. In the background, Tom Landry talking with Herschel Walker. Herschel's had one good run today, but boy, James Brooks has had two good runs, and one of them ended up very good, 51 yards for a touchdown. Well, obviously, that's the big play of the first quarter, but from a Dallas standpoint, they have not turned the ball over. They've not gotten themselves in the hole early where they've been forced to throw the football. Down 7-3, you still got all the game plan effective. And the Cowboys' defense has done very well against a fine Bengals offense. First quarter numbers, how do you size them up there, Ken? Well, you know, the Bengals are second in the National Football League in rushing, so no surprise that they've got 79 yards. And again, time of possession, a little overrated sometimes. The Cowboys uh, dominating that, but still behind on the scoreboard. So now you say last week against Kansas City, Cincinnati was didn't have the ball an awful lot, and today they once again are heading into that direction. Well, I think it just goes to show maybe a little bit of vulnerability by the Bengals' defense. It's the old bend-but-don't-break theory, but you've got to get this powerful offense onto the field more. And the Bengals begin the second quarter with Esiason bringing them out now at their 21-yard line. And it's second down and 10 on first down on the last play of the first quarter. Esiason threw incomplete to Collinsworth. They go back to James Brooks. Brooks heads up into a hole and gets out near the 25-yard line. The middle linebacker, Eugene Lockhart, and the left defensive tackle, Kevin Brooks. And now, once again, quickly into the tack mode. Cowboys had about 15 players on the field as Boomer goes down, but this one is going to be flagged against Dallas because that's why the Bengals do that no-huddle offense. As soon as they see you making defensive substitutions, they attack. The Bengals are very good at that. The Cowboys trying to bring five men onto the field. The Bengals just won't allow them to do it as they're going to get an easy five-yard penalty here. Danny Noonan and Jim Jeffcoat ended up bringing Esiason down, but I think when they sort this out, I counted 15 Cowboys on the field. <laughs> You know, and I think it's a situation where Dallas felt going into the game that they could do it. They could make the substitution. Oh, they only had 14. You know, but it's interesting. That's the second time the Bengals have tried to do it and been caught for illegal motion. Third down and six. And they're right up there again, ready to go. No chance to look around at all on defense or to congratulate the guy beside you if he made the tackle on the last play because the Bengals are right up to that line of scrimmage. Now they're at third down at six. And he's got his tight end. Rodney Holman with the catch at the 40-yard line. Driven out by Manny Hendricks and a first down for Cincinnati. Still Buffalo and the Jets scoreless. Houston's got three more and leads 10-0. Bernie Kosar's thrown a touchdown pass at least one in that game to Derek Canal. 17-0 at home. And the Browns had floundered the last couple of weeks, so they needed that one today. Chicago still leading 14-3. Minnesota by a field goal. And Detroit's added another field goal. 7-3 here at Texas Stadium. Just started in the second quarter. Icky Woods got a big hole. Lockhart will make the tackle out at the 49-yard line, but Icky Woods goes off the left side of that line and finds a nice crease there. 
Oh, the Bengals offensive line, not a fancy line. Uh, they don't do a lot of pulling, a lot of trapping. The, the old mush plays up the middle. They're so big and strong, they like to run the football straight ahead. I think it's worth mentioning at this point, one of the few four-man line teams the Bengals have faced, and so far doing a good job of figuring out the blocking schemes in the running game. So if you're at Boomer Esiason, or when you played in front of this line, you sleep well on Saturday night, you know you're going to be protected pretty well. And you're not going to wake up sore on yeah. Monday morning. Nine yards on first down. Second and one. Brooks had nowhere to go. Gary Cobb and a host of other Cowboys were there, but Cobb drives Brooks out of bounds, and James got out of there, too. He didn't try and make a play out of this. He saw there was nothing there. You just kind of cut your losses as best you can. Let's take another look at that one. You see Jim Riggs, a tight end, going in motion. James Brooks running left. Icky Woods trying to get into Gary Cobb. Does a nice job playing off the block and making the tackle, forcing James Brooks out of bounds. That's a real good play by Gary Cobb. And they lose one and make it third and two. Collinsworth into the lineup at a wide receiver spot for the Bengals. Looks in motion. They give it to Woods. Well, it looked as though he had it, and then he got pushed back by Noonan and Bill Bates. Let's see where the forward progress marks him, and if he did get the first down. They're going to take a look at it, but it appeared that his forward momentum took him past the first down marker. It's going to be close. Again, good body surge by Icky Woods, a, a powerful running back. Uh, Icky Woods, about 232 pounds out of University of Nevada, Las Vegas in his rookie year, but nine touchdowns rushing already. He's had a tremendous rookie season. So let's see what the measurement has right now, and it is going to be first down Cincinnati. We'll take another look at it. If we look right down the line of scrimmage, Nice surge by the Bengals offensive line, and there he is. The forward body lane takes him across the first down marker. He gets a lot of those inside the five-yard line. He is the designated guy to go get it. When they're down first down and goal, they love to give it to Icky Woods. First and ten, right at the midfield strike. Bengals lead 7-3. Siasen looking for Holman again. Oh, nice catch at the 30-yard line. Big man going down low like that. That's a heck of a catch. We have a flag down. This one could be coming back. And it is coming back. It's a trip against the Bengal offensive line, I believe, as they knock down a pass rusher. Well, Boomer Siasen did a good job of reading the blitz that time. Bill Bates, the strong safety, on the line of scrimmage, blitzing. Number 78, offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. Munoz is nailed for the penalty. Watch this beauty by Rodney Holman. Has not been a large factor of the Bengals' offense so far, only 23 catches, but here, the ball coming in low. Great fingertip catches. It goes down to make the catch. Too bad. Anthony Munoz is the man that was caught for tripping. In the NHL, he'd get two minutes, but right here, he ends up with 10 yards. So it's first down and 20 at the 41-yard line. James Brooks. Well, a couple of yards. Again, the Cowboys had a lot of people over there to stop the play. Lockhart is there. Michael Downs, the free safety comes up. I tell you, a good job by the Cowboys of stringing it out here, letting the pursuit catch up, and I counted seven Cowboys around the football. There's Danny Noonan hustling down the line of scrimmage. What had his Cowboy defensive line loaded with number one draft choice. They start four, and they got a first rounder on the bench in Randy White. They got five right there, and if you're going to play the four-three defense, you got to get quality people. Second down, 16. That sweep only netted four yards. gets down inside the 45-yard line. Jeff Coat chased him down. Good decision by Esiason, if he's okay. Yeah, he's all right getting up. There was just nobody open down the field. Boomer did a nice job of stepping up into the pocket and finding the running lanes. As we take a look at it again, 
Again, watch the pocket form here. Nice job by Bruce Reimers, Bruce Kazurski looking for somebody to block. When it starts to close in, Boomer Esiason sees the lane, takes it up in there. With the Cowboys playing man-to-man -man defense, there's nobody to cover the quarterback. Once you break the line of scrimmage, you've got room to run. I want to ask you, do you have a feel for that when to take off? Does he feel that? It's a sense. You feel the pocket closing in on you. Third down and four. From the Cowboy, 43. Again, a lot of time. And Eddie Brown juggles and hangs on inside the 35-yard line to the 33 and a Cincinnati first down. Boy, Boomer had a lot of time to pick and choose, and he saw 81 wide open across the middle. Again, the Cowboys a heavy man-to-man -man team in coverage. We're going to see, again, good time. Eddie Brown just walked off the line of scrimmage, letting things clear out. We'll see him. And there he comes by to make the catch. And good job up front by the Bengals offensive line sorting things out giving Boomer again separation from the line of scrimmage to see downfield he ended up with Everson Walls coming over and making the tackle Eddie Brown having a good start again today first down Cincinnati Esiason dumps it to Brooks and at the 30 yard line a short gain as he's tackled by Randy White and Bill Bates and good job it's by Boomer Esiason. It's frustrating when you drop back to pass. There's good coverage down the field. The line is getting into you a little bit, and you dump the ball offshore. They can't get to you. So it's the first time today we've had an opportunity to call the name of a great all-pro, Randy White. He's had a lot of neck trouble. That's why he's got that extra padding up around his shoulder pads. Of course, you know, couldn't go through training camp. Was an assistant coach in training camp until the doctors okayed him to start practicing. A great career, though. He's in there a lot on pass situations, and there he is in that familiar crouch down there. Second down, seven, and Brooks reads a good hole again to the right side and gets down to the 25-yard line. He'll be short of a first down by a couple of yards. Brooks, a good reading back up to the line of scrimmage and then darted right. Get a real quick feet by James Brooks. You see him go up there. His feet always in motion as he looks for the hole. Here they are again on that attack offense, looking for Ira Hillary in the corner of the end zone, and it's incomplete. Esiason, I think, looking over to the sideline, saying to the official pointing over there that the Cowboys had too many people on the field again. And that's what Sam is saying also. But there is no flag on the field. Sam very livid about it. Uh, I think he said they were a stride from the field. Tim McGee joining in the action over there. Now a flag goes down, thrown from way in back of the pack at about the 20-yard line. They did call a penalty finally. Apparently they made up their minds late that there were too many on the field. Boy, very late. This is a couple weeks in a row I've seen late flags by the officials, and uh, it's tough to figure out what's going on, but apparently the no huddle offense worked that time for the Cincinnati Bengals. So at first there was no flag down, then well after the play, a couple of flags went down, and it's a first down for the Bengals at the Dallas 20. Again, a beautiful fake by Esiason, and Holman is wide open. Can he get in? Touchdown, Cincinnati! What a beautiful fake to James Brooks, and that left Holman wide open. Well, the great play-action fake allowed Rodney Holman to take his time to lay coming across the middle. Let's watch it. We've talked about Boomer Esiason and his great ability to fake the football. We'll take another look at it here. Again, James Brooks, his eyes follow the ball carrier there. We fool our camera a little bit. And here comes Boomer Esiason. Gets the ball away before pressure. Rodney Holman, wide open. And again, very good speed, good power as he breaks the tackle by Michael Downs for the touchdown. 20-yard touchdown pass. Jim Breach to tack on the extra point. 14-3 Cincinnati. So we pointed out about how young Sweeney sometimes doesn't make the good fake. Well, he's learning from the master today. What a job by Esiason. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Braun Electric Shavers. It is through superior design that superior performance can be achieved. And by Denerex Shampoo. Help stop dandruff itch with an extra relief medicine. Denerex. Fourteen three Bengals over the Cowboys. Jim Donovan and Ken Anderson from Texas Stadium. Second quarter. Lee Johnson ready to kick it away. 
Daryl Clack and Cornell Burbage back deep. Clack at the top, Burbage at the bottom, and Johnson to the football. Well, Burbage kind of jitterbugged around that one, didn't he? But he finally caught it. And turns it into a pretty good run back out near the 30-yard line. Dallas has been good returning kickoffs, and Sweeney back out to the field. And he's moved them to a couple of first downs along drives, but then that crucial play, he can't seem to pull the trigger. And the Bengals just did pull the trigger. 14 plays, 79 yards. They're on the field for six and a half minutes. And, of course, you saw the Esaias into Holman pass. Well, six and a half minutes, though, that's very key for them. Right. You know, that's the, the difference in the ball game. The Bengals sustaining their drives down past it so far. And I don't think you'll find Cincinnati sitting on any lead today after what happened at Arrowhead Stadium last week when they led by nine with six minutes to go and lost by three. Good run by Herschel Walker as he had a hole out near the 40-yard line and close to a first down. And the secondary ends up having to make the tackle on him. Solomon Wilcox brings him down. As we watch it again, uh, Joe Kelly, the inside linebacker, he's there. He just can't bring him down. He gets a shot on him. But again, the Dallas Cowboys have been running the football fairly effectively this afternoon. And Emmanuel King in the lineup now for the Bengals. He also missed on the that man right there. Of course, a lot of people miss on him. Second down and one. Swinney. Sneaks through. And that's a smart play, young man. Get down after he got the first down out over the 45-yard line. Let's go around the league right now. The Jets are on the board, 3-0. Still, Houston and Cleveland both winning. So the Bengals, if they sneak a peek up to the scoreboard, they'll be interested in those scores as they lead over Houston by one, over Cleveland by two. And we go through Detroit, 6-0 over Green Bay, and Kansas City leading Seattle. In the AFC West, you win at home. Nobody seems to win on the road. Cincinnati trying to win on the road here today out of the AFC Central, leading Dallas. 14-3. First and 10 Cowboys. Boy, look at Herschel fight for that extra yard out to the 50-yard line. Herschel Walker. We pause briefly right now for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Your number one sports station in Cincinnati, WLWT. Jim Donovan, Ken Anderson at Texas Stadium where the Cincinnati Bengals lead over the Dallas Cowboys 14-3 here in the second quarter with 6.35 remaining in the first half. It's kind of been the history of Dallas this year, a very tough time getting points on the scoreboard, and again, they haven't been able to threaten the end zone this afternoon. Four yards on first down for Herschel Walker. Makes it second and six. Sweeney rolling out. And it is caught. Todd Fowler, the fullback, comes out and makes the catch. Leon White was chasing all the way. He was chasing Sweeney. Kelly ended up on the tackle of Fowler. Uh, Joe Kelly, great speed for an inside linebacker. He's the number one draft choice of the Cincinnati Bengals. He's got Fowler all the way. But nice job by Sweeney putting it low away along the sidelines where it's a very safe pass and it takes you out of a bad situation. Now it leaves you down third and about three. How do you feel Kelly's been playing this year? He started off very well, kind of tapered off lately. Third down and three now after that scramble and throw by Sweeney. As he had Leon White on his back all the while and then had the concentration to slip it in there to follow. I don't think the play got off in time. Boy, there is a young quarterback mistake. Boy, and those are the kind that'll kill you when you've got third down and short yardage to go and you lose track of the 30-second clock or the 45-second clock. Delay of game, and now you're back third and eight where you don't want to be. So last week when they had 15 penalties, a lot of them were of that kind of a variety. People jumping offside, and boy, he was saying yesterday, Tom Landry, that they really weren't, you know, big penalties pass interference or things like that, but those little tickle penalties like this one that you just saw there. So now that's a big difference. Third down and eight. Four wide receivers in for the Cowboys. A blitz up the middle, and Sweeney in trouble. And he unloads this one, but they say that he was in the grass of Leo Barker. Ray Horton came shooting up the middle, 
They blocked on him, but that allowed Barker to come from the outside. And Leo Barker, the linebacker that stays in in the nickel situation, as the Bengals choose to blitz Kevin Swinney uh, on third down, you see Ray Horton picked up very well, but Leo Barker coming around on the stunt, has enough speed there. It's in the grasp and control, the big sack for the Bengals. And once again, they were up at the 50-yard line on third and three, and now Saxon has to punt it away. Standing back at his 20, in sunshine, Hillary makes the catch. Ooh, it took a lick at the 29-yard line. Garth Jacks, a linebacker, 53, came down there. And he's celebrating a big stick. We'll be right back. Right, we know that Sam White. Who's the young man there with the towel wrapped around just off behind Sam White? right behind the first down mark. Well, that's Matt Anderson, my 13-year-old son, who's working down on the sidelines this afternoon. Kind of helping out Coach White. Working the cords, keeping them untangled. Yeah, keeping him away from headphone cord tangle. <laughs> that dreaded affliction of NFL coaches. First and 10, Cincinnati. Icky Woods. And he takes Ed Too Tall Jones for a ride. Out over the 35 yard line, Icky Woods. Full head of steam. Let's go around the scoreboard now, check in again. Well, Pittsburgh's on the board with a touchdown in Cleveland, 17-7. Steelers have lost six in a row in Cleveland through the years. Chicago's added another touchdown, 21-3. Minnesota leading over the Colts. Colts have won five in a row coming into that one. Kansas City big over Seattle, 14-0. Detroit, 6-0 over Green Bay. 14-3 here at Texas Stadium. Bengals with the ball and the lead, second and four. And again, Icky Woods. Plowing through and is up close to a first down near the 40-yard line. Again, we're going to see here, Dallas is now out of their four-man line. They're playing a 34 defense, and here's Noonan now playing the nose man. Does a good job of stringing it out, but I think the Bengals doing such an effective job running the football against the Cowboys, moving it consistently. They're trying to make a change on defense and get something going, getting more people pursuing the football. Danny Noonan. Out of Nebraska, very happy after Nebraska's win at Oklahoma yesterday. And sure shot. And he woke up early Tuesday morning with a sore heel. He's kind of been battling all week. Talked to him before the game. He said it's uh, it's tender, but he can play through it. So they are just a couple of inches shy of the first down. It will be third down and less than one. Incidentally, on that last play, Anthony Munoz seemed to get banged up a little bit and was holding on to either his hand or his knee. But he is still in that huddle. There's Munoz right there. He's flexing. I believe it was his left hand. So those offensive linemen are so involved in their hands using it in blocking. It's, it's uh, very easy to get a wrist. The elbows nicked up a little bit. Third down and one. Five minutes to go. First half. Messiah has been playing very well today against this Dallas defense. Three plays in a row. first down had the yardage and then the ball just came flying out well again a young rookie mistake you get the ball you just have to hold on to it good surge by the Bengals offensive line Bruce Reimers gets a pancake and Icky Woods just loses the handle on the football as he's going down oh Icky 14-3 Bengals but the Cowboys have some life after the turnover and there you see Icky Woods on the sideline after foaming the football. The Bengals offensive line dominating, but it's no good when you fumble the football. Dallas gets a big break. Let's see if they cash it in. Sweeney play action fake. Jason Buck coming from the outside. Loops the ball down the field. Incomplete, intending it for Michael Irvin. Let's watch the Icky Woods fumble again, and you'll see that he's got a lot of room to run. He's got the first down. And there's Eugene Lockhart in there as he gets a hit with the shoulder, and he just, the ball pops out. You've got to go in there, cover the ball up in those short yardage situations with two hands. Penalty coming up here on Dallas. Number 36 offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. Penalty on Todd Fowler. Cost them 10 yards. Penalty's hurting the Cowboys now back to their own 45-yard line. They were starting at the Cincinnati 45. Oh, they finally get the turnover from their defense, and now you have a holding penalty on first down to put you in first and 20. Get the end 
the I formation are the Cowboys. Here comes Herschel Walker. Pushing and pushing inside Cincinnati territory to the 48-yard line. He got stood up straight at the 50-yard line and then pushed for a couple of extra yards. Joe Kelly ends up tackling. Watch it here, the little quick pitch to Herschel Walker going to his left. We've talked about Tim Crumry in there all day long. He's fighting off the double team, but Herschel Walker reads it, cuts back over the middle of the ball. Again, good yardage. You know, when it's first and 20, you don't think about running the football with a guy like Herschel Walker. They can get you eight yards. It's a very effective play. Center Bob White ended up pushing Tim Crumry right over after Crumry had overrun the play. Walker got seven, making second down at 13, and he goes out wide now to the top of your screen. Leaving Fowler the lone back in the backfield. Woo! Ray Alexander was the intended receiver at the 25-yard line, and he was looking for the ball. And I'm wondering, you know, he started out in shadow. He turned around in sunshine. Or maybe it was just an overthrow. I think it was just a poor throw. But Doug Cosby came off the line of scrimmage, the tight end, clean over the middle. When it's second down and 12, 13 yards, you don't need to get it all in one play. If you can get eight of it, push it back in that third and medium again. Now, do you think he's just looking, Sweeney, I mean, at, at one receiver, knows that play, looking at the one guy? I think that's probably a pretty good indication. All young quarterbacks do. Third down and 13. They're at the Cincinnati 48-yard line. Kelvin Martin is in motion. Uh-oh, look on Horton. Got him. Ray Horton, blindside, the worst kind, back at the 40-yard line, untouched. That's the third time the Bengals have come with the blitz in a nickel situation, and until Dallas does something to pick it up or makes a big play, the Bengals will continue to do it. Dallas quickly up to the line of scrimmage, ready to punt. They're giving Cincinnati a dose of their own medicine right now, as the Bengals were late getting their punt return team on the field. Ira Hillary with the fair catch out at the 17-yard line. The sack by Ray Horton ends that drive as you look at Cincinnati leading over Dallas with 3.37 left to go. Second quarter, Boomer Esiason and Sam White evaluating what they have left and where they're starting. Coming up at halftime, Bob Ahmad, Gail and Frank with all the highlights and scores from around the league on NFL Live as we'll be going back to New York. 3.37 remaining here in the first half. Jim Donovan and Ken Anderson from Texas Stadium. A 51-yard touchdown run by James Brooks and a touchdown pass from Boomer Esiason to Rodney Holman, making up the Cincinnati scoring. Ruzek kicked a 44-yard field goal for the Cowboys. And on first down, James Brooks with a big hole. Out to the 28-yard line. Tackled by Gary Cobb, who recovered a fumble on the last series, and Bill Bates. As James Brooks once again gets a chance to go through the line of scrimmage clean. And any good running back, you give him that amount of time with another move, he's going to make nice yardage for you. As we look at it from the ground level, watch the play of the Bengals' offensive line. Everybody getting into their blocks, and there's the scene for James Brooks. He goes through the line of scrimmage basically untouched. Bates tries to get an arm around him to bring him down, slows him down, but he goes through the line of scrimmage with a head of steam. Measurement after the Brooks run. First down, Cincinnati. Jets still lead over Buffalo, 3-0. Phoenix is on the board. Houston leading 17-7 at the Astrodome. And Cleveland ahead, 17-7. Chicago, 21-3 over Tampa Bay. And the Vikings, with two field goals, lead over Indianapolis, 6-0. Kansas City, big over Seattle, 14-0. And the Lions with interim head coach Wayne Fonts in his first game today, leading 6-0. First and 10 Bengals, 3.05 left to go in the first half. The fake by Esiason. And Rodney Holman, again, is wide open, makes the catch out near the 40-yard line and gives Cincinnati another first down. That's kind of the play they scored on. Very similar, but again, set up with a play-action pass by Boomer Esiason. And Rodney Holman finally getting some man-to-man -man coverage, gets a chance to work against a strong safety, and that's his second catch of the afternoon. Now, would you say Esiason is a good quarterback down near the end of a half, near the end of a game, as we come up to that two-minute drill? The Bengals have done a very good job in their two-minute offense this year. Boomer Esiason does an excellent job of directing them. Oh, again, another wide-open receiver. This time it's Collinsworth. They're going to give him forward progress after the catch 
up at the Dallas 46 and a half yard line and a first down and it's been easy pickings right now for Esiason. Right and Chris Collinsworth after going to the Pro Bowl his first three years in the league has kind of been relegated to part time duty with the Bengals this year. I think that's only his eighth catch on the season this year. They're not going to get this play off before the two minute warning. And there it is right now. Two minutes left to go here in the first half. Cincinnati leading and looking as though they're going to add to that lead, too. Two minutes to go in the first half. Bengals lead 14-3. Bengals offense has done a good job mixing the run and the pass. If you look at the statistics, 13 passes, 15 runs. Boomer Esaias, 8 for 13, 108 yards on the afternoon. Guy with the Bengals jacket on there was Jim Breach. He could become a factor near the end of the first half. Everybody's got all the timeouts left in the bank. And certainly with two minutes to go, less than 50 yards, more than enough time. Of course, when I speak of breach, the way the Bengals are moving right now, they're not thinking breach, they're thinking six. Well, the Bengals uh, have only attempted nine field goals on the year, but they've scored more touchdowns than anybody else in football. That's why Jimmy Breach has not been on the field much. It's first and ten. You know, I think what they were, they had second down up on the sticks before the two-minute warning, but that pass play just before the two-minute warning was a first down yardage to Collinsworth. So now they have it straightened out. It's first and 10 at the 47 of Dallas. Brooks in motion. Wide open again. It's Collinsworth down at the 26-yard line. Everson Walls was on the coverage, and Boomer runs him right back up to the line of scrimmage. A minute 45 and the clock running. All of a sudden, we talk about Chris Collinsworth not being a part of the offense. They come to him two plays in a row. And on the last three pass plays, Esaias and his head, receivers wide open. That was another good run fake to Stanley Wilson that time. 32, and Wilson's in the backfield, and that's him going in motion. They run. Brooks. Loose ball, but the whistle had blown. They had said that Brooks and the play had ended. Minute 19 remaining. And Cincinnati calls a timeout. They'll call a 40-second timeout. And they'll check it out very quickly. Tim McGee is 85. Haven't seen much of him today. We've seen a lot of him, though. Boomer sighs into the sideline. Say, Boomer has really emerged as one of the fine quarterbacks in the National Football League. He's made the big plays for him this year. Uh, I think he does a good job directing the running game. Of course, the Bengals have been running the football effectively, but really has become a leader out on the field. And again, coming up at halftime, NFL Live back in New York, ready to update you on what's going on around the league on Sunday, number 12. Timeouts remaining. Bengals just used their first one of the half, so they have two left. Dallas trying to plug up the holes defensively. Ernie Stopner there, the silver-haired coach, shaking his head. Well, they need to shut the Bengals off here and not let them get into the end zone and try to make some adjustments at halftime. Yeah, because I would think 21-3 is a long road to come back when you're going with a young quarterback like Sweeney. Maybe we will see Pelur in the second half. Right now, we're watching Boomer Esiason just dissect this Dallas defense. Jennings in motion. He gets away from the blitz and then throws it away. Blowing through was Michael Downs. Esiason then just dodged a couple of steps to the right to get away from the oncoming Downs. It's a good quickness by Boomer Esiason. See, it just backpedaling away, allowing him to throw the football away, and that's what all coaches tell the quarterbacks. When you're in scoring territory, you can't take the big sack to knock you out of field goal range. So if nothing else, Boomer Esiason did a good job there throwing the football away. White signals to Esiason. And he delivers it to the rest of the offense. And they're looking at third down and eight now. And we have a timeout called defensively by Dallas. To make sure they have the right personnel on the field. Ernie Stopner with the headphones on right now. Talking with his defensive unit. Downs was the player that blitzed in there. And he almost ended up with the big sack of Esiason. I mean, when you think about the Dallas Cowboys defense, you think of a blitzing, aggressive type defense, which certainly uh, that time the blitz was very effective in forcing Boomer Esiason to throw the football away. And this is what Boomer Esiason sees as he drops back the pass. Good quickness right there. Swings the ball up a little dangerous right there with the man in your face, but he gets rid of the football. They were also coming with Bill Bates, so they sent a lot of people. Downs and Bates. Bates came in late and jumped up in front of the pass. 
Well, when you're having trouble stopping an offense, there's nothing left to do but to try to blitz and slow them down. Now it's third down and eight. Both teams with two timeouts left here in the first half. A minute 14 remaining. Bengals lead 14 to three. They're inside the 25 yard line. Eddie Brown in motion. Incomplete intended for Eddie Brown at the five yard line. There was an outside rush coming from Ed to Tall Jones as the Cowboys scissored in on Boomer. Sent a lot of people and Jones was coming from the outside. Boomer wouldn't have seen him. But again, I think that was the idea of that play to move Boomer Esiason out of the pocket in that obvious passing situation to avoid some of that pressure. Well, as you said, Jim Breach has only attempted nine field goals this year. His longest of the season is 34 yards. This one will be a 41-yard attempt. Well, he hasn't had to kick many field goals. I guess that's the bright spot of that number. <laughs> as you said, the Bengals have scored a lot of touchdowns. Got a lot on it, and it's right down the middle, and it's good. Jim Breach with his longest field goal of the season. 41 yards, and Cincinnati works the clock pretty nicely there. 17-3 to add to their lead. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, and it is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is prohibited. This game is the property of the National Football League, the Dallas Cowboys, and Cincinnati Bengals, all rights reserved. A minute five remaining. You know, you look at this first half, Boomer Esaias and say, well, I tried to do what you told me, coach, but there was just nobody open. Jim McNally, that's on the left of the Bengals offensive line coach, explaining to Sam the theory of move, moving Boomer Esaias out of the pocket so he doesn't get hit. You know, Jim McNally, a very happy guy because the Bengals can run the football effectively this year. You talk to any offensive football coach or offensive line coach around the league, they love to run the football. Ken, how do they all work together right now? You've heard so much through the years about Esiason and White having their problems at times. How are they clicking? Very well, obviously. They're having a great year. The Bengals 8-3 Boomer having personally his best year of the season. I think they're thinking along the same lines this year. And, of course, Boomer's just done a superb job of directing the Cincinnati Bengals offense. How do you feel they're clicking? <laughs> they're always in sync. You know, you look at this football game here, you know, the Bengals on the verge of taking total control of it. Dallas can't afford one of the turnovers they've had in the past and give the Bengals a cheap score before halftime ends. Lee Johnson has it ready to kick away to Burbage and Clack. Clack is 42, Burbage 82. And it will be Burbage right on the goal line. Oh, way up on a pack. Out to the 21, the 22-yard line. Second quarter has not been a good quarter. 95-23 in the second quarter of this year. Wow. Boy, you know, Dallas has had trouble scoring points all year long. And it's been 10-0, I believe, in this second quarter so far today with a minute to go in the half. Yeah, there it is. 10-0 now. Bengals in this second quarter. 17-3, the numbers in the total column. One minute to go. First and 10. The football out over the 20-yard line. And Mr. Sweeney has two timeouts left. Three wide receivers in. Almost intercepted by Ricky Dixon, the number one draft choice of the Bengals out of Oklahoma. Boy, he was right there. And darn it, he says, because if he caught it, might have gone all the way. You know, the Bengals figured they needed help in the defensive secondary, so they picked Icky Woods, had trouble signing that left door. The, uh, the door open for Eric Thomas, who's played very well, but here we'll take a look at Ricky Dixon. And he can't quite hold on to it. Alexander had the step on him. Originally, the ball was just a little late being delivered. Second down and 10, Ricky Dixon. Sweeney trying to force it in there. And it almost cost him dearly. There's a penalty, and Ray Horton picks it off at the 41-yard line. The penalty, I think, would have been a hold against Dallas, so the Bengals will turn that down and get the ball back with 48 seconds left, and Ray Horton's having himself an afternoon, and Kevin Sweeney is not. 
I think Horton's looking up to see if they're going to show it on replay. <laughs> You know, but you're in a position here. You're backed up before the half. You just don't want to make the big mistake, but you've got a young quarterback in the football game. There was the hold at the bottom of your screen. That was Daryl Smith holding Jason Bucks. The ball is overthrown. Ray Horton's there. Now the Bengals have a chance for another score. Nice job by Horton to get down on the turf, make the catch right in his belly, pulls it down at the 41-yard line. 48 seconds remaining. Cincinnati with two timeouts left. That was Horton's second interception of the year. And he's been in the backfield a number of times today in blitzing situations. 17-3 Cincinnati, and they can add to it. Siason almost fell, and this one was almost picked off by Robert Williams. Robert Williams almost had the pick off. There he is. Asias and lucky to get that one back. Here is the interception, and watch Sweeney getting pressured here. Again, down at the bottom of your screen, Jason Buck, the defensive end. There's the hold by Daryl Smith, but again, good pressure coming in. Throws the ball just, you know, it's just a bad throw by Sweeney as he overthrew it. 41-yard line, the line of scrimmage. The incompleted pass stopped the clock. 42 seconds remaining. Robert Williams is covering on Tim McGee. They haven't thrown to McGee much here today. They've been going mostly to Brown and Holman. They run it, and Brooks has a big hole. Look at him go. Come on, go, go. Steps out of bounds at the 11-yard line and stops the clock with 35 seconds left. And James Brooks has been doing that all afternoon. He's been having a big day, but it all starts up front with the offensive line as they're giving him a chance to break through the line of scrimmage clean. And we see the replay starts off left tackle. There's nobody there. That, the hole's a mile wide. Anybody can run through that hole. Not everybody can do what James Brooks does now, though. Turn the ball to the outside with that speed. 25-yard carry. And the scoreboard, Houston 24-7 now over Phoenix. Cleveland 17-7 over Pittsburgh. All the scores and highlights coming up at halftime. When we go to NFL Live in New York. Bengals going towards that cowboy end zone. And again, it's Brooks. And he carries inside the 10-yard line. And the Bengals might have used the timeout they did. They have one left. With 28 seconds left as we flick through the remaining scores. Chicago way in front. Brooks is injured down on the turf. And we'll be back to Texas Stadium. It is 17-3 Bengals. James Brooks was down, and he was down for some time. Then he got up and walked off, as you see. He's okay, or it appears to be okay. Boy, he's okay stat-wise. Look at that, 129 yards in the first half. Well, they can't afford to lose a player like that. He has been so so valuable to them all season long. As we said earlier, 5.3 yards per carry with the tops in the National Football League. Second down and two. At the eight-yard line of Dallas. Stanley Wilson in the backfield. Asiason rolling out. Fires, incomplete, they say he was out. And it was Eddie Brown trying to get the feet down and hang on to the ball right on the corner of that end zone. But a good job getting to the sideline, throwing it low and away, trying to let Eddie Brown, I know talking with Sam White, he worked on that with Joe Montana when he was with the 40, 49ers. Uh, I used to do those things, those type of drills. But now Boomer Esiason gets right to the sideline, throws it low and away, and Eddie Brown, there's one foot. Looks like, looks like the knee was down out of bounds. Yeah, I think as the right the knee, catch. the right knee was on that white paint before that other foot came down. Third down and two. Jennings, or rather Wilson, to the five. Stanley Wilson down to the five-yard line, and they'll have the first down with 15 seconds to go in the half, and they have used their last time up. We'll take one more look at Eddie Brown along the sidelines. He does. There's the knee is out of bounds as he catches the ball. Good call by the officials. Eddie Brown talking it over with Tim McGee. We had that number up that he had the eight touchdowns this season so far. And, of course, there's still some time left. Last year, that was a big problem. They couldn't get any big plays to Eddie Brown. No, the Bengals had the problem last year of scoring touchdowns in general. Almost uh, a reverse. Uh, the Cowboys this year struggling. The Bengals putting a lot of points on the board. Tom Landry, his hands on his hips, saying, how are we going to slow these Cincinnati Bengals down? 
Boomer Sias is in a situation now, 15 seconds to go. There's no timeout that you're going to probably have to throw the football here. And you throw it for the end zone, you take your shot, but you make sure that this clock gets stopped. You don't want to walk off the field without your field goal team at least getting a shot to kick. What Esiason doesn't want to have happen is what happened to him a couple of weeks ago at home in this situation against Pittsburgh when he jammed one into the end zone and Hardy Nickerson of the Steelers picked it off. He tried to force one in there. Let's see what he does here. Bill Bates coming out of blitz. Well, he doesn't force that one in. Touchdown as he finds Holman. Boomer Esiason doing a good job of reading the blitz. The Cowboys coming with everybody trying to make the stop. And Rodney Homer comes going to come right at you here. Just runs out into the flat. Boomer Esiason throws a strike. And Ron Burton cannot stop him from the end zone. Holman was a forgotten man in the Bengal offense, but they found number 82 today. But all of a sudden, again, another mistake by the Cowboys, the interception by Kevin Sweeney that allowed him to get into the position to score the touchdown before half. So Esiason was frustrated the last time here in, inside two minutes when they had to settle for the breach field goal. Got the ball back, put it in, and breach puts it through with the extra point. And the Bengals are way out in front right now. 24-3 indeed today. They look like a team on a mission to win on the road. They've been disappointing so far this year on the road, losing three of five. But today they're way out in front. And again, we'll see good protection for Boomer Esaias. He gets rid of the ball quickly out in the flat to Rodney Holman, who just outruns Ron Burton to the end zone. Holman today has four catches for 52 yards and two touchdowns. Let's go now and check in on the other scores. Houston, 24-7 now over Phoenix. And in the third quarter, Cleveland leading 17-7 over Pittsburgh. So the Steelers hanging in a bit. That's always a tough game. Chicago, 21-6 over Tampa Bay and Minnesota leading. Seattle's on the board with a touchdown at Kansas City, 14-7. Seattle started the day tied with Denver and the Raiders for first in the AFC West, all at 6-5. And Detroit leading over Green Bay in a field goal kicker's battle. Eddie Murray's been the guy in that one. Cincinnati 24-3 at Texas Stadium. We'll be going back to New York right at halftime. We're only 11 seconds away here from the end of the first half. All the scores and highlights coming up at halftime. Daryl Clack will take it for the Cowboys at the 10. Out over the 20, out over the 25 to the 26-yard line, and there are six seconds remaining. And that was Lee Johnson kicking off for the Bengals. The Bengals, very unusual, they keep three kickers. Hunter Scott Bullhag placed kicker Jim Breach, and then when they want to kick off, they put Lee Johnson in. He, uh, one of the, the long kickoff men in the league. Sweeney into the huddle right now. Six seconds left here in the first half. Will he play in the second half? I think Tom Landry's probably got a pretty good idea of what he wants to, but do not be surprised to see Steve Pallor come in and try to generate a spark for the Dallas offense in the second half. Two wide receivers in. And they run the ball. That's Fowler, the fullback, out over the 30 to the 31. Cowboys head to the dressing room. The Bengals in a much better mood than Tom Landry's Cowboys. 24-3, the score at the half, as the Bengals came out here ready to play today. Boy, were they ready. And Boomer Esiason has thrown two touchdown passes to Rodney Holman. NFL Live halftime activities will continue in a moment. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. By the Cincinnati Bengals at the end of the first half, 24-3, they lead over the Dallas Cowboys. And I think Cincinnati knew they needed a big day with Houston and Cleveland, AFC Central Division rivals, playing at home in winnable games, and both are winning. So the Bengals knew they had to play well today. And they are. You know, they came in uh, talking with Sam Weiss before the game. He liked the look in his players' eyes before this football game. He felt they were ready to play. And the Dallas Cowboys have struggled offensively once again. And uh, the Bengals seem to have answered what they're doing with the flex defense from the defense line. The Bengals' offensive line has totally controlled the game. Now, how rough is it to play quarterback in the NFL when you have a struggling offensive line? Watch Kevin Sweeney. Ken, you take it. So you want to play quarterback in the National Football League. Now, these aren't sacks. These are just getting hit as you're knocked down and you're a young quarterback, you're struggling. There you fall over the pile late, and here comes the safety, the blitzes. You throw the ball away, and it's just 
There's the safety blitz. Oh. Very tough to get anything going when you get a lot of pressure like that. And your helmet always comes up a little <laughs> bit high because your face mask has been rearranged. And Sweeney took that kind of treatment last Sunday against the Vikings, and it has persisted here this afternoon in the first half. So there he is. The young man is still in one piece, but you wonder if he'll be out there running the show offensively for the Cowboys here in the second half. He's got the ball ready to warm up. Or will it be Steve Fleur? We'll have to wait and see that in just a couple of moments. But again, a not impressive stats. Four out of 13, 32 yards. An interception, so a, a tough day for Kevin Sweeney. But what's the old adage? You can't throw from the seat of your pants. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. James Brooks hasn't been on the seat of his pants all that much. 129 yards rushing in the first half. Just a tremendous running game by the Bengals, but it starts with the offensive line. Well, James Brooks has had, uh, had gaping holes to run through then with his natural ability. He makes it into the big place, but when you're averaging over 12 yards per carry, a uh, pretty effective day for James Brooks. He went down injured right near the end of the first half but walked off under his own power and looks to be okay and the Bengals certainly took a lot of deep breaths after he got up and walked off all right because he is such a key part to their offense 10 rushes 129 yards and really hasn't taken many licks today that's how cleanly he has been able to get through that front wall some of the holes have just been gaping and we've mentioned it earlier but the Bengals offensive line a veteran offensive line 38 years of experience in the National Football League between them uh, they work very well together when you, you talk about an offensive line, they're certainly playing very well. But again, the, the total domination by the Bengals, uh, 15 first downs to six. Look at 309 total yards of offense to only 80. If you remember back to, to 1985 when these two teams last met, the Bengals 570 yards of offense in that game, which is a record uh, that the Dallas Cowboys defense would rather forget about, but that's the most in club history. Now, I'm not trying to put words in Sam White's mouth in the locker room at halftime, but I would have to guess that he had maybe he didn't even have to say anything, but go in there and say, now don't let up don't have what happened last week in kansas city happen here this afternoon we're in very good shape well i think the very first series a key for the Bengals to come out don't close up don't get conservative on offense now you've been successful with the things you're doing let's keep the same game plan here don't start thinking about the clock too early and above all don't turn the football over and let dallas get back into the game this kickoff is sponsored by budweiser the king of beers Roger Ruzek getting it ready to start the second half. The Cowboys need the ball. They don't need this situation where they have to give the ball right over to a red-hot Cincinnati offense to start the second half. But that's the situation as we get set to go. 24-3 Bengals over the Cowboys. Cincinnati looking to go 9-3. Here comes Stanford Jennings. There's a flag thrown. As he comes out near the 30-yard line, tackle made by Robert Williams, but again, we'll check out the yellow flag down at about the 31-yard line. Is it just my imagination? Uh, of course, there's a flag on this play, but I don't think there's been as many flags this year in the kicking game as maybe there has been in the past. Well, I'll tell you, I've seen a couple of bad teams this year, and there, <laughs> there have been plenty of flags there. 51 All right, the penalty is on Leon White. The mic wasn't working on our referee until he said 51. <laughs> and Leon says, oh, just it has to click in just when they mention my number. But it did. And so now that marches them back inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. And here come the Bengals. James Brooks goes out wide as a wide receiver. He's at the top of your screen, the farthest player out. Chris Collinsworth is inside him. Now Brooks comes in motion. Icky Woods on first down, and the Cowboys shut that down. Danny Noonan is there for the Cowboys. A hey, big series for the Cowboys defense. They need to show that they can shut the Bengals offense down a little bit and give their offense a chance to get back on the field and not let them totally control the football. Injury update for the Cowboys. Nate Newton went out early with a right ankle sprain. X-rays were negative, but he won't be back in today. Second down and nine, one yard for Ricky Woods. Boomer looks it over. Roll out with a blocker there. Oh, Rodney Holman, a rare sight today. That's a drop ball down at the 25-yard line. That hit him right in the hands. Went right through his hands. It's once again Boomer Sison rolling out and making the good throw. Here are the scores now on Sunday, number 12. Holman back into the huddle. Buffalo has tied it 
Phoenix getting a little bit closer to Houston now as they add another touchdown. Cleveland's blocked another punt that led to a Reggie Langhorn touchdown after the Browns got the ball back. So they are cruising in Cleveland, looking to end a two-game slide. Chicago's winning, as are the Vikings. Seattle has come back to tie up Kansas City after they fell behind 14-0 in Detroit leads 9-3. Third down and nine, Boomer with a lot of time. A flag goes down as Collinsworth catches out at the 42-yard line. But the flag went down after Eddie Brown got knocked down at the 35. Boomer saying it's against the Cowboys, and I believe it might be. Everybody's pointing that direction. 27 yards. Well, if we can read lips, I thought he, his mouth said number 40, Bill Bates, on the interference. But, again, the big pass completion by the Bengals' offense, taking him out of a hole when the Cowboys' defense had a chance to give good field position for their offense. Bill Bates getting all readjusted. You, you think they're not working hard and too tall? He goes from Max Montoy ends up with them, keeps hammering, hammering away. See, and that's the too tall specialty still being able to get up and knock the ball down with that great height a flag down again off to a sloppy start here in the second half brooks can't hang on and bates almost came in and got the ball down at the 46 yard line a penalty illegal motion on cincinnati well again the bengals offense coming out sputtering a little bit a couple of drop passes and a penalty Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Your number one sports station in Cincinnati, WLWT. Jim Donovan and Ken Anderson back at Texas Stadium. Cincinnati leading 24-3 as we have just started here in the third quarter. The Bengals having a big offensive first half. Have the ball here in the second half. Just got marked off five yards on an illegal motion penalty, so it's first and 15 at the 37 of Cincinnati. McGee and Brown, the wide receivers, Brooks in motion. And Asias in the pass. Dumps it down the middle, that's incomplete. At the 45-yard line, James Brooks couldn't hang on as Asias threw that one right down near the ground, and Brooks could not hang on. Let's watch Joe Walter, the Bengals' right tackle against Too Tall as they kind of bang each other around. Joe Walter having a good year this year. He shut out guys like Reggie White with Philadelphia, Mark Gasno when he was leading the league in sacks while he was playing Howie Long of the Raiders. Uh, Joe Walter having a fine year, and he's having a big test today with Too Tall Jones. He's had some pressure. 14 seasons played, and there's Ed Too Tall Jones, and I think he'll play a 15, too. Uh, he's playing as well as ever this year. Maybe a 16th and 17th. On second down and 15, James Brooks is out to the 40-yard line. Tackle made by Jim Jeffco. And Eugene Lockhart also getting off the pack. Ball out to the 41. Sam Weiss is not relaxed at all on that sideline. He knows there's a lot of football left to play. But if you watch the Bengals' offense, they kind of get to the line of scrimmage real quick. If they try to substitute, they get set it and snap the ball. If not, they go back into the huddle. Mark Whalen has checked in a defensive tackle for Kevin Brooks on the Cowboys front four. It's third down and 12. Almost a fine catch by Collinsworth and very good coverage again by Robert Williams. And if you watch that matchup, Williams is battling a size advantage. Collinsworth is taller, and that's why Esiason threw it so high. Well, Chris Collinsworth, 6'5", Robert Williams only 5'10". But again, good pass protection here by the Bengals. Boomer has plenty of time to throw as he throws it out in Collinsworth's direction, but good coverage by Robert Williams. But you see, that could have been a situation where Williams was there in pretty good position, but that height advantage could have gotten Collinsworth the ball. Kelvin Martin is back deep for Dallas. Low snap, full hag, gets it away. Good punt. Martin on a lot of hang time on that one. Oh, he got outside. Now back inside. Kelvin Martin out of Boston College gives the Cowboy fans finally something to get a little excited about. Today's game is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, phone your nearest BMW dealer. By Remington, your grooming expert. 
and by the good time, great taste of McDonald's. Cowboys make a quarterback change, as we expected, and we told you earlier in the game that Tom Landry said yesterday that he probably would go with Steve Pallor if Sweeney couldn't get it going. And 80 yards of offense in the first half is not going to be going. Yeah, Sweeney could not get it going. Kelvin Martin did on that punt return, though, for 21 yards, so we'll see if Steve Pallor can relieve the way Sweeney did a couple of weeks ago against the Giants when he relieved Pallor and threw three touchdown passes. Now Sweeney starts and Pallor relieves and Walker runs on first down out over the 35. Once again, we're going to focus in on Tim Crumry, the fine nose tackle. Again, he's engaged pretty well, but he slides to the proper side as he's in on the tackle once again. But a pretty good job blocking him by Bob White, the center. Three yards on first down. Ray Alexander. In at wide receiver. Michael Irvin, the rookie, is also in. Pallur rolling out. Good block on Crumry. They throw the pass over here to an offensive lineman who just checked in. That's Kevin Gogan. There are three flags down. Well, the crowd liked it, I'll say that. That's the biggest roar of the afternoon. Oh. Well, they were trying to set up the screen backside to Thornton Chandler, their tight end, and Gogan was there for the block. You see Pelora rolling out, looking back. I don't know if he just doesn't see the tight end or <laughs> there's nothing else but for Gogan to do but catch the football. At least he's chosen he's got good hands. I was just going to say, he really hung in there and made a nice catch. Tim Crumright drawing a lot of attention. The old rolling pocket by the Dallas Cowboys. They go to the outside and then throw the screen back to the left. And Crawford Kirk getting a cut on Tim Crumroy. That's a nice little change of pace when you've got a good defensive line. See if you can't go low. Third down and seven. Herschel Walker should have a first down. As he flew through out over the 45-yard line of the 46. First down, Cowboys. Give it to them. Again, you know, we're, we're talking about Bob White here, the center for the Cowboys. We're going to take another look at it. Good blocking by the line. And Herschel Walker blows right through the hole real quick as Crumroy kind of hangs on at the end. But Bob White, a replacement center. Tim Rafferty, their starting center, been bothered with a thigh, hasn't played in the last couple weeks. Walker gives the Cowboys a first down, and the spot is out at the 46-yard line. 11-15 to go third quarter. Walker reads again. And stays upright down near the Cincinnati 45-yard line as the Cowboys now show a little life with Pallor in there, handing the ball off. Scores remaining constant right there, all in the third quarter. Again, for the Bengals fans, both Cleveland and Houston winning. Chicago winning over Tampa Bay. And Minnesota in the fourth, 9-0. Seattle comes back to tie at Kansas City. And Green Bay on the board with a field goal. I count four field goals in that one. Second down, two. Herschel. Boy, listen to that. Listen to the crowd every time Walker gets his hands on the ball. Whether he gets nothing, and that's not too often, or just one. There's a flag down, and one of the Bengals players says it's holding against Dallas, and by golly, he's right. Well, you know, penalties, you know, Dallas this year, well over 700 yards, the second most penalized team in the league, and it's tough to generate offense when you're constantly getting called for the penalties. And just at a point where the Dallas offensive line started to show a little movement and they were running the football effectively. Danny White right on the edge of your screen giving the signals there. Penalty was on Thornton Chandler, the tight end. He's called for the hold, and this will, again, march him back inside the 50, back into their own territory at the 48-yard line. Doubleheader day here on NBC. Coming up next on most of these stations. Stay tuned for the second half. Most of you will see the Denver Broncos battle the New Orleans Saints in a crucial game for two playoff hopefuls. Plus regional action. Check local listings for the game in your area. Second down and eight. Pallor. Urban. Take 
take another look at that play. The biggest offensive play of the afternoon for the Cowboys. And Steve Pallor makes it. But you want man-to-man -man coverage by Eric Thomas, the Bengals quarterback. As Michael Irvin a little juked it off the line, then it's just a foot race. Eric Thomas sees the ball late, and Michael Irvin comes back to catch the ball for that 32-yard gain. Pallor delivering the ball. Watch Irvin with the sense to come back. Eric Thomas got caught turning the wrong way, looking for the football. So now the Cowboys deep. Here comes Walker. Waiting for the block of Crawford Kerr, and then Phillips came up from the corner. He read the running play. There is Lewis Phillips to make the stop on Herschel. Did a nice job coming up, a little slow developing play, but Herschel had a lineman out in front of him, and Lewis Phillips makes the play. Little Herschel Walker coming around, little spin move there in the backfield, and there you see Crawford Kerr trying to get out. He looking for Leon White, but there comes Lewis Phillips in, unblocked to make the play. Even if Kerr makes the block, there were a lot of orange and black there. Walker carries today, 18. All other backs, one. Fowler is the other back that carried the ball. Second down, 10, nothing on that play. Here's Pallor back. Caught, Fowler out of the backfield, down near the 15-yard line. David Fulcher chases him out for Cincinnati. Actually, Fowler makes the catch, but I don't know if you'll see it on replay, but Michael Irvin was wide open across the middle. Yeah, we're going to get a great view of it from ground level. Fowler comes right at you. Good throw. Catch first down, or third down coming up. This is the deepest penetration by the Cowboys offense this afternoon. Third down and four. Daryl Smith comes in now at left tackle. Taking Wydell out, the rookie, along that offensive line as you look at Fowler who made that last catch. 8.59 left third quarter. Cowboys trail 24-3. Walker. And a big hit put on him by Lewis Phillips. Eric Thomas was down low, but Phillips came in to polish him off. Yeah, but a good job by Herschel Walker holding on to the football. I think surprisingly, he's got very good hands as a running back. You think of him as a rusher, but he's got good hands as a receiver going into the game. 42 catches. Here you see Steve Plower dropping back. Trying to pick up the first down, but the big hit by Eric Thomas and Lewis Phillips. But the Cowboys are going to go for it on fourth down. Well, the crowd was yelling right away, go, go, go. Nothing to lose at this point. Yeah, really. At two and nine, you've lost seven in a row. It's fourth and two. He's going to run for it. The quarterback wrong. All right, a little bit of life in the Cowboy attack. coming in, generating some excitement here in the stadium. I think that carries over to the football team, a very dull first half for him. But you see, he comes back in here, fourth down and two, one step back on the quarterback draw. He's just looking for a seam to try to pick up that two yards in the first down. Good call by the Dallas Cowboys. Crumry was there and dove out to get Pallor. Couldn't get him. Reggie Williams finished him off down at the 10-yard line. A little beyond the 10 because they can get a first down. Oh, look at Herschel Walker fight and score! Unbelievable run by Herschel Walker. It appears he was stopped at about the six-yard line, and the team gets very excited about this. Herschel Walker's only second rushing touchdown of the year, 11 yards. A little noise in the stands now. At first, it looked as, he, as though he was stopped at the eight, then at the five, then at the two, and then there was no stopping him. Here it is. Nothing fancy. Off tackle, off the eye formation. It appears to be stopped there. Then again at the five-yard line. Look at the leg drive as he just carries people with him, and he still doesn't go down in the end zone. There was a penalty... Again, we cannot hear the officials, Mike, so there's Herschel on the sideline, but he did point towards Dallas, but the touchdown does count, so maybe it's one of those that's going to be marked off on the kickoff. And Herschel Walker having a good day, 19 carries, 89 yards and a touchdown. Might have been for totting after the touchdown. They are re-emphasizing that now in the National Football League. Ruzek waiting for the snap. Pelour holds. Herschel 
Walker. Look Out of the eye. Look at the effort here as he just goes to the goal line. Appears to be stopped. 11 yards, touchdown, Cowboys. An 11-yard touchdown run by Herschel Walker with 50 yards of effort on it. It was something to see. A new quarterback, Steve Pallura, comes in for the Cowboys. He connects on a big fourth down and two play and then adds some juice. Yeah, but finally the Cowboys sustain the drive and get it into the end zone. There's a little momentum on their football team. I think that's going to mean a lot to a young football team here in the second half. Big series now for the Cowboy defense and likewise the Bengal offense to see if the momentum has really swung. There was a penalty marked off against the Cowboys, and it was for the extra celebration after the touchdown run by Walker. So now you see where they're kicking off from their own 20. Stanford Jennings at the 20. Out to the 30, out to the 35 yard line. And he goes out of bounds, and so the Bengals have good field position. Let's clear up the penalty now. It was on. Kevin Gogan for unnecessary roughness after the touchdown. And that is why Ruzek was kicking from his own 20, which is a big advantage now because look at where Cincinnati begins. As Boomer has him huddled up and they'll start over their own 35. First down. Bengals lead now at 24-10. 7-16 to go, third quarter. Brooks in motion. And Esiason, oh, down the middle in traffic, but he zips it right on the numbers to Rodney Holman, and Holman is out over the 45 to the 48-yard line. And Boomer saying, let's get right up there and attack, I think. Well, it's amazing. The Cowboys have been playing a little bit more zone defense as of late. Now, we talked about earlier in the program that they're 80% man, now seeing a little zone defense. Houston, 31-14 now. Cleveland well in control in the third quarter over Pittsburgh. 9-0 Vikings over the Colts in the fourth. And first and 10 for the Bengals. They lead 24-10 here in the third. Stanley Wilson gets away from Jeff Coach, but not away from Cobb. And they lose yardage back to the 45 finish up the ticker. Kansas City now 17-14 as they add a Lowry field goal. What a good job by the defense. See Jim Jeffcoat slicing down from the top of your screen on the right. He misses the tackle, but Gary Cobb is there to make it. It's amazing how a nice drive for your offense all of a sudden inspires your defense. Loss of three, second down 13. Here comes a lot of rush. and back at the 35-yard line, and the Cowboys are breathing a little fire. I'd say good pressure. Boomer Esiason making a good move to get away from the pressure. Two tall Jones with great speed has seven and a half sacks on the season. Let's take another look at that. As, as Boomer drops back into the... Well, the Bengals go to hurry up offense looking down the field. Throw it for Eddie Brown, and it's incomplete down at the 30-yard line. Fourth down. Let's take another look at that last play. This is the second down play. Tutal coming in, working on Joe Walter. Pressure up the middle. Eugene Lockhart, but Boomer Esiason rolls out. Great speed by Ed Tutal Jones. Boomer Esiason, left-handed quarterback, going right, didn't have a chance to throw it away because he was moving to his right. And Ed Tutal gets him, brings him down out of bounds. Well, you're right about the speed. He was right there, full hag now, putting from his own 21. Kelvin Martin is deep. A little bit of a low snap, but he rides it out. Fair catch and good field position for Dallas. Over the 30, out to the 33-yard line. Here come the Cowboys, down by 14. I never thought you'd see the day that in Dallas, at a Cowboy game, fans would be wearing bags over their head. And after that last touchdown run by Herschel Walker, you think they would have come off in a hurry. I think that one actually just took it off. <laughs> 5.33. Third quarter, Walker had a touchdown the last time they had the ball, and Herschel bangs out over the 35 to the 37-yard line. He started this drive with 93 yards rushing. He'll add to it on that carry, and one touchdown. 
And Tim Crumry up a little slowly, but he's okay. And once again, Tim Crumry getting right in the middle of things. You see the Dallas offensive line, though, starting to take a little charge here in the running game, especially. Here we take another look at that double teaming Tim Crumry. But he still managed to get in the lick, but Herschel Walker still made five years on it. Uh, the defensive line coach of the offensive Bengals says Tim Crumry is unblockable in the running game. Five yards on first down for Walker. Two tight ends in for Dallas. Pelora to throw. And Michael Irvin tried to come back and make the catch. And it's incomplete. Pass delivered too short by Pelora, and Irvin runs back. Made a catch the last time. We're going to see the isolation here. Michael Irvin on Lewis Phillips as he goes down. Gets, tries to run the out and up. But I tell you what, didn't sell that play. His eyes never went to the outside. It was, his head was always upfield, and a defensive back will know if you're not looking to the outside, you're not going to catch the football. I'm waiting for the second move. And that's what they're looking at, their eyes? Looking at the head because you can't catch the football unless you're looking at it. Third down and five now for Dallas. The ball out at their own 38-yard line. And we had a wide receiver jump off. Ray Alexander released too early. Walker makes the catch. It's a first down, but this one's coming back. 87, Ray Alexander jumped off quickly for the Cowboys. But again, you get enough yards for a first down and the completion to Herschel Walker, and the penalty is going to take it back. There he is. He knew it, as, and the official was right there, and he knew it as soon as the play started because he shook his head and didn't run any kind of pass route. Well, and it's a little tough, you know, wide receiver may have trouble hearing, but you should still watch the football on the inside. Cowboys, nine penalties, 15 last Sunday night against Minnesota. And as we said, they're the second most penalized team in the National Football League this year. Uncharacteristic of a Tom Landry coach team. So Tom now thought he had the first down and instead he's got third down and 10. It's like starting all over again. With only one down to get it with. 4-20 remaining in the third quarter. in that situation. He's trying to make the coverage going across the field. But once again, he's not very happy about it. Let's look at it again. Steve Ford dropping back in the pocket. Pretty good pass protection this time as he fires out there. Ooh, it's tough, tough to see that call right there. Just a tough angle to see if he did have his hands on it before the catch or not. But that's the second pass interference call of the day. First down, Dallas after they commit the big penalty jumping offside that time by Ray Alexander on third and 10, the incompleted pass to Kelvin Martin, but Thomas Flagg for interference for Cincinnati. Fowler has it, and Fulcher has him at the 49-yard line. You know, the first pass interference call on Eric Thomas was very tight coverage, and it was a questionable call. What about this one? Well, let's look at it once again. You see him coming in, his, look, appeared his right hand went up there, but I think this year, it doesn't make much difference. There's some contact as long as you're not controlling the receiver. And certainly he wasn't controlling the receiver with that right hand. Very, very tough call. And you know, he was looking at the ball, which is the other key. You've got to be looking at the ball, and he was there too. 3.38, clock running, third quarter. 24-10, Cincinnati. Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker spinning and diving. And gets a first down inside the 45 of Cincinnati. And Walker has been something here in the second half. Herschel Walker in the offensive line starting to take charge a little bit. Again, the eye formation, the quick toss off tackle. He sees the cut behind the play as a couple of Bengals overrun it. He's got the speed to hit the hole, the power to take it for the first down. Ken again, Bob White, the center, controlling Crumride. Walker now over 100 yards, 106. First and 10, Dallas moving now to Cincinnati 43. Herschel again, off the left side, inside the Cincinnati 40 to the 38, and up off the pack, now to the scores. Buffalo, if they win today, they wrap up the East, and they lead on a Norwood field goal in the fourth. They'll go wild up there in Buffalo today if they wrap it up. Houston looks like they're gonna get through past Phoenix. Cleveland leading 27-7. The Bears 
on their way to a win. And the Vikings leading over Indianapolis, Kansas City. After Seattle had tied that game, comes back with 10 more points. And here comes Herschel Walker. This time the Bengals are there. Seattle was down 14-0 to Kansas City. Started the day in a three-way tie for first in the AFC West. Tied that game up, but now they've fallen behind to Kansas City. Kansas City's kind of a spoiler, aren't they? Injured player Wydell, the rookie out of Boston College. The left tackle down injured. Let's take a timeout from Texas Stadium. We'll be back 24-10. Working on the neck of number 78, Dave Wydell, the rookie left tackle on that offensive line for the Cowboys. You know, and uh, Nate Newton went down in the first play. They're starting left guard. Tom Rafferty, the starting center, is not playing today. He's injured. And now Dave Wydell, when you've got a young offensive line, it's tough to lose him. Boy, Dallas quickly back to work. And so is NBC on Thursday, right back here at Texas Stadium. Houston and Dallas join us Thursday. A minute 45 left third quarter. A big third down and three for the Cowboys. Pilar incomplete as he overshoots Ray Alexander at the 30-yard line. So now what do you do? It's fourth down and three. The crowd says go. Pilar looks to see. I think they are going to go. They're taking an awful hard look at it over here, but that time Floor had plenty of time just to not throw a good pass out there to Alexander. Yep, they're sending in the play with tight end Chandler coming in. Thornton Chandler brought it in from Tom Landry and Danny White. Kevin Sweeney all over there. I think a good call to go for in a situation like this. Hey, you've lost seven in a row. You're two and nine. You're not thinking playoffs. Fourth down and three. And the Bengals come with the house on that play. Bye-bye, Mr. Pillar. Everybody was there. But Jim Scow was there first. Well, normally in a situation when you take a short drop, you need to get rid of the ball quickly, but nobody open. He drops back quickly, looking for somebody, just can't find anybody. Solomon Wilcox is there to take away the slant, and the house came, comes caving in. Jim Scow is there, among other Bengals. All right, so that takes the air out of the balloon of the Cowboys just a bit. Here come the Bengals, back up. Jim Riggs, the tight end in motion. Stanley Wilson. And he kind of looks like James Brooks on that play. So it just means one thing, and that is that that offensive line, no matter what the back is, they're opening up the big hole. Coming up next on most of these NBC stations, stay tuned for the second half of our football doubleheader. Most of you will see the Broncos battle the Saints in a crucial game for two playoff hopefuls. Plus regional action. Check local listings for the game in your area. Second down and one, a nine-yard gain for Wilson, who now limps to the sideline for the Bengals. He's had a little problem with his knees this year. Uh, they've been a little tender. They tend to puff up during the week on him. He has not missed a game this year. You know, they're pretty deep, as Ernie Stockner signals him in. They're pretty deep at running back, though. That's a nice luxury to have a guy like that, Wilson, behind Brooks. Oh, yeah, and uh, Icky Woods, they've got their Stanford Jennings, a good all-around purpose back for the Bengals. Doesn't see a lot of action. Second down and one. James Brooks has the first down and is pushed back. Ball is inside the Cowboy territory to the 49-yard line. In fact, they'll even give him the 48-yard line. Joe Walton, the Bengals' right offensive tackle, coming home. He's hometown is Dallas. He's hitting everybody in this place. Starts off on too tall. He loses him. He'll push on Noonan. He, see, he sees Garth Jacks. There's too tall again. He said, anybody in my way, I'll go for a lick on. First and 10. 40 seconds remaining. Third quarter. You think of them as a passing team, but there they numbers tell you they're a great running team. The best in the AFC. Asias with another beautiful fake. Looking for Collinsworth. Robert Williams pushed him from the back and a flag. But once again, you see the great play action faked by Boomer Esiason. Chris Collinsworth has man-to-man -man coverage. There's nobody in center field. And Robert Williams, a little too aggressive. Number 23 defense. You see it First again. Down. He just goes right after Collinsworth and brings him down. That ball was right there. 
I think Chris would have had an easy catch. Hits it right in the top of the helmet as he's going down. Robert Williams. But again, the penalty hurts the Dallas Cowboys. 34 yards worth. And like Rodney Holman's been a found man in the Bengals offense, so has Collinsworth today. Ball is just inside the 15-yard line. Another fake. Look at that fake, and look at Brooks. Touchdown, Bengals. There was nobody within 20 yards of James Brooks on that play. But you got to watch the ball handling of Esiason and the way he persisted to hold on to that fake. But again, the Bengals going with their two tight end offense, which is a running formation. We've talked about it all day long. Boomer size on the great fake. Look at here. There's James Brooks looking to block somebody. The great fake to Icky Woods. He hides the ball in his stomach. You see James Brooks at the bottom of your screen slipping out. No one there. Boomer makes a little move to buy some time. The fingertip catch by James Brooks. Easy touchdown for the Bengals. Second touchdown for Brooks. And Breach with the point after good. 17 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Boy, what a Houdini. Yeah, who is that magician handling that ball? That's worth taking another look at here. There he is. Boomer puts the ball in his stomach. Now look at him crouched over like he's hiding the ball. Makes a nice little move to buy time. That was the key to the play, that little move at the end to buy time to find James Brooks as he filters into the end zone. That's a good combination today. Esiason to Brooks. NBC Sports for exciting football action beginning at 3.30 Eastern with NFL Live. Then it's a Texas shootout with the hard-hitting Houston Oilers battle Herschel Walker and these Dallas Cowboys for bragging rights of the Lone Star State. Join Dick Enberg and Merlin Olson for all the action Thanksgiving Day only on NBC. There's a few Bengals fans here in Dallas Stadium. 6-3 the Bills lead on a possible AFC Eastern Division clinching day in Buffalo. Houston's way up on Phoenix now, 38-14. Cleveland way up on Pittsburgh, so it looks as though the AFC Central Division standings will stay firm, with Cincinnati leading by one over Houston, by two over the Browns. And the Bengals with a big matchup next week against the Buffalo Bills in Cincinnati. Seattle trailing Kansas City in that big AFC Western Division game. Big for Seattle as they started the day tied for first. And Detroit with Wayne Fonts coaching today. Leading over Green Bay, Cincinnati 31-10 to the delight of those Bengal fans. Here at Texas Stadium, Burbage deep in his end zone, and Cornell goes down to one knee, a touchback, and the ball will come out to the 20-yard line with 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, the Cowboys have to come out now and continue something on offense here, see if they can establish getting another one in the end zone and get it back close. They went for it on fourth down the last time they had the ball, and Pelora was sacked by Jim Scow. But it was a key fourth down conversion by Pelora on the drive before that that set up the Dallas touchdown by Herschel Walker and at least momentarily got them back into the game. Pitch out. Walker rumbling to the 25 and runs into Joe Kelly. But again, they had the seam for him on the outside and let him get to the corner for the run. At the end of the third quarter, the score, Cincinnati 31, the Dallas Cowboys 10. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. We go to the fourth quarter. Jim Donovan, Ken Anderson at Texas Stadium and Cincinnati leading 31-10, looking for their first win ever here at Texas Stadium. Of course, they've only played here twice. No, they have played here twice, but still looking for their first win. Unfortunately, I was the quarterback in both of those games. The so I guess you would remember. 38-13 yeah. to 13 was as close as we got, but a much better football team from Cincinnati coming to Houston. Yeah, they've looked very good today. 31-10, they lead. Dallas with the ball. Herschel Walker with the run. And still running. And a first down. Out to the 34-yard line, and we've seen him put together a couple of those runs. Fulcher makes the tackle on Walker, and he was... Just one tackle away from going. And Herschel Walker single-handedly carrying this Dallas' offense on his back. Again, breaking tackles. And there's Ray Alexander. He didn't want to get hit by David Fulcher coming in there. Let me get out of the way. But Herschel Walker, 
powerful running back and just is totally taking control of the game for the Dallas offense. Good numbers today, 127 yards. Sometimes he has to feel like he's all alone out there, though, on offense. Pelour, up top, intended for Ray Alexander, incomplete. Lewis Phillips and Solomon Wilcox were there for the Bengals. Turk Schoenert, the backup quarterback for the Bengals, made a nice catch on the sideline, though. Then we're going to watch Alexander against Lewis Phillips. Bump and run coverage. Pretty good position by Lewis Phillips. He's played good man-to-man -man coverage all season long. Got a little hold of his sleeve there. A little slip. He's open. The Lord just can't get him the football. There's Turk. Got in a couple of weeks ago against Pittsburgh. In the snow at Riverfront Stadium. Maybe he might get some action here in the late going. A lot of time, and that's been rare for a Cowboy quarterback today. And an underthrow by Pelour. So he was a hero about 10 minutes ago to this crowd. He was maybe the, the fire that was going to, the match that was going to light the fire to get it going. But now he's hearing some boos. Well, that's the tough thing about being a quarterback in a losing season. And, of course, I went through it several years in Cincinnati. We had our good years, but I was there for a lot of 4 and 12 years. And, you're only as good as your last play. You throw the big pass, you're a hero. You throw the incompletion, the boos come out again. Third and ten. Three wide receivers in for the Cowboys. Irvin, Martin, Alexander. Oh, I don't know where he's throwing it, but he throws it right to Eric Thomas, and he's got it, an interception. And for a guy who's been flagged twice for pass interference, out a lot of frustration with a spike after the interception. Well, Eric Thomas was the closest one to that football. I have no idea who was going to. Herschel Walker was in the general vicinity. But just a fourth throw, and the Bengals come up with a turnover and a chance to make a laugher out of this one. And one of those six interceptions was a big one early in the season when they won at Pittsburgh. Steelers driving for a game-winning touchdown, and Thomas picked that one off. This one comes at a less crucial time. But nevertheless, he makes a nice catch. They get no pressure on Fleur on the play. Messiah is still in there and firing and completing, too. This time it's Tim McGee inside the 40 at the Cowboy 37-yard line. Garth Jacks and Everson Walls over on the coverage. You know, you had mentioned a little bit earlier, Turk Schoenert may get a chance to get into the action. Certainly with 31 to 10 here, I think probably a little too early to put him in. I think if the Bengals score another touchdown, you'd like to get him in the game. Turk hasn't had a chance to play much this year. With the Bengals in a playoff situation, you'd like to get him some sort of work. So we'll be Bengals right back. We'll be right back to Texas. Today's game is brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light by Mitsubishi Motors, who invite you to come see the full line of cars and trucks. Mitsubishi, suddenly the obvious choice. And by Planters, there's a whole lot of nothing going on. Planters. And Dallas on their way to their eighth loss in a row. Cincinnati on their way to their ninth win of the season. Second down and five. Tim McGee, the injured receiver, limped over to the sideline on that last play. Holman in motion, Brooks runs. Got a first down down to the Dallas 31-yard line. Ed Tutal Jones on the tackle for the Cowboys. You know, Pierce James Brooks had a little bit of a hole there, but Tutal coming in with that good speed of his playing to run and jumps on his back. Let's take another look at Tutal at the top of your screen there. Plays off the block of Max Montoya there. Joe Walter tries to get a piece of him. But now watch his good quickness getting the outside on James Brooks to wrap him up. That's why he's been a great player all these years, a very mobile defensive end. First to 10 Bengals. At the 31 of Dallas, Rodney Holman in motion, Brooks sweeping near side. And he's chased out by Eugene Lockhart and tangled up in a bunch of wires over there. Jets have tied now, the Bills in the fourth quarter. Houston leading in the fourth. Cleveland winning in the fourth at home. Both the Oilers and Browns at home. Chicago winning big over Tampa Bay in the fourth. And Minnesota 12-3 in the fourth. Kansas City winning. So is Detroit. Cincinnati winning here 31-10. Holding on to first place in the AFC Central Division. Coming into today, 
They led Houston by one game, Cleveland by two, and that looks like it's going to hold firm. 12-41 left in this one. 31-10, Bengals. Esiason on second down at eight. To Brooks, and he's immediately hit. Garth Jacks, the linebacker out of Florida State, up to make the hit on Brooks. Brooks and Jacks wishing each other a happy Thanksgiving. I think what happened on that play, Boomer Esiason saw a strong safety Bill Bates on the line of scrimmage. He went to the audible. After Boomer audibleized, Bates jumped, jumped back, changed coverages, and there was nobody open downfield as Boomer dumped the ball off to Brooks. So now there's 12-10 left. When has Sam White seen enough of Boomer Esiason for the day? When they get their next touchdown. Which could be soon. 31-10, Bengals. Eddie Brown over to the sideline. Chris Collinsworth is in. Boy, Boomer still putting it up. And Rodney Holman makes the catch at the 20-yard line and then barrels down to the 15. Well, all of a sudden, Rodney Holman has become a big part of the Bengals' offense this afternoon. One of the underrated tight ends. We got Rodney Holman split out on this play as he goes down, just cuts across the middle, and he is wide open. The Cowboys playing a zone defense. He gets behind Eugene Lockhart for the catch. What a day for Holman. Look at those numbers. Six receptions, two touchdowns, 81 yards. And again, you know, Dallas, an 80% man coverage team. That time they play the zone and they get hurt. All right, what will Boomer do as he looks it over? First and 10 at the 15. Nicky Woods. Five more yards down to the 10. You know, you had mentioned earlier about when has he had enough of Boomer Esaias and seeing him in the game. Uh, I think there comes a point in time you don't want your starting quarterback getting hurt late in the season, especially in a blowout. And number two, you'd like your backup to get some game experience. What happens next week if Boomer goes down? You'd like to have a guy like Turk Shona with a little game type experience. So I would expect that Turk would get a little playing time sometime before this afternoon's over with. Second down and five, ball at the 10. 10 and a half left. Jim Riggs, 87 in motion. Icky Woods to the five and in touchdown. And once he got inside the five, there was a little bit of lethargic tackling by the Cowboys there. But well, once again, Tom Landry can't believe what's happening to his defense out there today. He's talking with Steve Ford about the next offensive series. But the Bengals offensive line giving the running backs the line of scrimmage. As Icky Wood starts off left, good surge. Max Montoya, Bruce Kazerski, there's Joe Walter coming off. You see he's five yards down the field before anybody comes close to getting a hand on him, and then nobody could make the tackle as Icky Wood gets the touchdown. Boy, Mike, Michael Downs and Everson Wall just kind of gave him a love tap when he went by as Woods was not going to be denied. Jim Breach getting a workout today, bangs it through, and the Cincinnati Bengals now. Sunday, the NFL plays here. The Bills' Jim Kelly goes eye to eye with the Bengals' Boomer Esiason in a shootout between the top two powerhouses of the AFC. Or it's a must-win game for two playoff hopefuls when the Browns head to the nation's capital to battle the Redskins. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL Live. 10-22 left. 38-10, Cincinnati in the lead. Gone is the white baseball cap. On is the Bengals' playing helmet, and that's Turk Schoener. So we have to think he'll be in next time around for the Bengals as they kick it away. Oh, good kickoff by Lee Johnson as it squibbles out of bounds, but in the end zone, so it will come out to the 20-yard line. What do the Bengals have left in the regular season? Ah, look at that one next week. Some big games for them. Buffalo next week, but it's at home. Two in a row at home, then they got to go down to Houston, which will be a very difficult place to play before they finish up with the Redskins back in Cincinnati. Got a couple of tickets to uh, that game next week? I can take care of you. Yeah. 10 and 1 Buffalo. And winning today, or rather tied today, excuse me, with the Jets. No, there's the scoring drive. Icky Woods gets the touchdown. Cowboys back to work at their own 20. 10 17 left. Gordon Chandler in motion. A flag goes down as Herschel Walker runs it out to the 25 yard line, and there are flags all over the place. 
Well, Michael Irvin moved as the man was in motion, and then nobody came to a stop, so you got a double motion, that'd be a penalty. Very good shift. Two men moving, not resetting before the snap. Very good. Very good by you. As the, official, by as the official said, if you have two men in motion, that is legal as long as you stop and reset for a second. That time the Cowboys didn't. Boy, this has got to be just what the doctor ordered for the Bengals to come in and play this well before that big a game next week. Well, especially on the road. They've lost their last three. They're three and five. and uh, Lost three of their last five football games. So it boosts their confidence. You know, gives them a little momentum going into that Buffalo game, which should be a great one. First and 15. Because the Cowboys have the shortest of practice weeks, along with the Oilers. They're back to work here Thursday. Right here on NBC on Thanksgiving Day. Walker with a little tipsy do. Out over the 25 yard line. Leo Barker has to say, hey, that's not fair. 53, Barker was in good shape, ready to meet Herschel head for head, and then get a little twist on him. Not only is Herschel Walker their leading rusher, also tied for their leading, re leading receiver going into this game. Watch the move. Little spin, spin move on Leo Barker. Herschel Walker, I mean, you can't say enough about this guy. And he's got to be so frustrated, a uh, two and nine season for the Dallas Cowboys, and he, yet he keeps putting numbers on the board. Well, that says it all. One man team, maybe. Second down and one. From the 29, 9.05 left. Three tight ends in for the Cowboys. Ooh, Walker took a stick from Lewis Phillips. You could hear that one, and he gets the first down over the 30. Lewis Phillips coming up on the play. He's only a 190-pounder trying to take on Herschel Walker. What about 225, 230? It's a mismatch. Very, very impressed, Ken, excuse me, with Phillips and Thomas today. Both corners have had good ball games here for the Bengals. You know, they started off the season very strong in that first six-game stretch. A lot of interceptions. The last couple of weeks, not the turnovers, but they've come back with very tight coverage this afternoon. Darryl Clack in the backfield now for the Cowboys. Pelour throwing and wide open is Thornton Chandler. Down to the 47 of Cincinnati and a first down. Tackle made by David Fulcher. There's Chandler, 89. First activity for him today. Receiving anyway. Yeah, but Pelour threw that ball with authority. You know, you go back there, you get your feet set and you let it rip out there. And, uh, and he threw a strike. Here again, a little play action pass. Good separation. Look at him step into the football right now. And Thornton Chandler comes up with a catch, a big hole in the Bengals' own defense. 20-yard pickup down to the 46 of Cincinnati. First to 10. Again, it's Daryl Clack. He's the tailback in that eye formation for the Cowboys. Look out. Oh, what a hit by Fulcher. And Fowler held on to the ball, and that's a miracle. And Fulcher, I think, took the worst of the hit. That's why you hear the roar. He's getting up slowly. This is a big-time collision right here. You get a chance to see it very closely. A little flash of pass. He's forced to throw the ball quickly. And there, David Fulcher, one of the big hitters at Strong Safety, having a fine year, comes up. And that is a collision right there with Fowler. Fulcher was getting up and then kind of halfway got up. And you can see he was kind of a little bit wide-eyed right there. Let's see if he can get himself pulled back together as the Bengals continue to win big. <laughs> It's a jungle out there. You can survive with the new four-door Mitsubishi Motel. We pause briefly right now for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Your number one sports station in Cincinnati, WLWT. Jim Donovan, Ken Anderson, Texas Stadium. Dallas trailing the Bengals 38-10 on second down at seven. Kalura throwing long. Incomplete. Ray Alexander is the intended receiver. Eric Thomas, who has an interception. And Steve Pelleur looking on as he tried to go big upstairs for Alexander. Jets have the ball at the 50-yard line with two and a half minutes to go in that game and a tie, 6-6. Phoenix adds a touchdown, but probably going to be too little too late. And Cleveland winning over Pittsburgh. Chicago's going to win that one. And Indianapolis's five-game winning streak is over. Minnesota beats them with four field goals. Hey, Seattle's tied that game up now, 24-24 with Kansas City. And Detroit beating over Green Bay as the Seahawks come back in big-time fashion. That's Darryl Clack. 
And he goes inside the 40 down to the Cincinnati 38-yard line on third down at seven, so it will be fourth down, and you got to think the Cowboys will go again. Oh, there's no question about it at this point in the football game that they're going to go for it. But interesting call. Tried to set up the screen pass on third down. The Bengals in a little bit of a blitz and just couldn't quite get the men out in front of it to get started. Danny White adding his two cents worth over in there, giving Tom Landry his suggestions, and surely Danny White has been a good quarterback in this league for a lot of years. Well, those are some pretty wild signals going out there. <laughs> Looked like he was holding up like binoculars at one time. Does that mean I can't see you call a play? Let's go to New York for an NFL Live update. We go to Gail Gardner. All right, Jim, thank you very much. We're going to take a look at the tying touchdown at Arrowhead Stadium. The Seahawks and the Chiefs. Today, Craig back to pass. Finds the rookie, Brian Blades, over the middle. 14-yard touchdown. The score is tied at 24 apiece. Let's go back to Dallas. Boy, who's going to win that AFC West? That thing is really up for grabs. Does anybody want it? I don't know. Nobody wants to take charge and step up to the forefront there. Den a couple of weeks ago, Denver looked like they were done. Then they come back the last couple of weeks, beat Kansas City, and blow Cleveland away. Yeah, but what the AFC West did last week, they handled the AFC Central Division yeah. in every category, and that opened the wild card possibilities up for everybody. All right, now Seattle is tied. Denver up at the top, the Raiders, and of course Seattle in a real war now with Kansas City after falling way behind. They've been behind a couple of times in that game, but they just won't quit. So a lot of possibilities for the playoffs still lurking around the National Football League, especially in the AFC uh, conference. Sam White, his team up atop the AFC Central Division, and they're going to stay there after today. Turk Schoener had the helmet on. Now he's got the white hat back on. And Boomer Siasen still looks like he might go in and play. Have to watch that. Right now we're watching the Cowboys on fourth down and less than two. And Michael Irvin is open inside the 10-yard line. Well thrown ball by Pallor. First and goal at the 8. I tell you what, a gutsy call by the Dallas coaching staff. It's fourth down and short, and they go with the long pass. But Michael Irvin was wide open for the big play. 29 yards. You see the play action pass. You kind of lose him back there in the massive bodies. But Michael Irvin coming wide open here. Nobody in the area as David Fulcher comes over to make the play, stops the touchdown. So it is a young Cowboy team. Very, very young at wide receiver, but a lot of talent there. Urban, who just made the catch, is in motion. Pallor drops it, picks it up. Takes a big stick from Solomon Wilcox at the nine. The play is going to lose one but they almost lost the football. The price the quarterback pays when he drops the football, you scramble for your life, and that's when you get a good shot taken at you. Solomon Wilcox comes up. Steve Fuller got to be a little bit frustrated. Uh, nothing more embarrassing when the quarterback and center can't handle the exchange. This looks like he never got a grasp of the ball there. Jim Scout trying to chase him down, and here comes Solomon Wilcox to put the hit on. So it's back near the 10. Second down and goal. time what's he gonna do he's gonna go down with reggie williams draped in his ankles and michael Irvin saying oh if you had only seen me because i'm wide open he was there floor just couldn't find him let's take a look at michael Irvin. see if he is wide open he comes down there goes to the back of the end zone lewis phillips thinks he's got help back there there's nobody there but michael he's waving his hands jumping up and down I think Lewis Phillips lost track of where he was on the field. Maybe he should have been in the end zone. He throw me the ball. Oh. Missed opportunity. Boy, a lot of energy wasted in those <laughs> leaps. <laughs> As he comes back out wide, it's third down and goal. Back at the 14 now. He stuck it in there, and the ball is caught by Everett Gay, his first catch. But it will be fourth down now, and it's at the six. Tackle made by Barney Bussey. Barney Bussey had tight coverage on that play, but Steve Fleur throws it in there, puts it on the right side into tight coverage for the completion. Well, I, I guess they just can't hope now that Urban would be that wide open again. <laughs> that would be the obvious play you'd look to. Oh. 
again, you know, we sit up here, we see all the open receivers. When you're down on the field as a quarterback with all those bodies coming around you, it's a little bit more difficult. He really missed him, though, because he did have a lot of time before he finally went down on that play. It's fourth down and goal from the six. Looking for Alexander. coverage it's tipped up and Ray Alexander catches it on his back in the end zone they say where have those plays been all year long that was a sensational grab by Ray Alexander quite seen one like that, catching a ball laying on your back in the end zone as the ball was tipped up and about in the air. Ruzek for the extra point out of the hole of Pelor. And he gets it. Alexander's six-yard touchdown reception. Let's watch this one again. Watch, there's double coverage here by the Bengals. It looks like he's trying to throw the fade to the outside. He stumbles. Look, great leaping ability. Tips it twice. The third time brings it right into his body as the Bengals defenders fall over each other. And there's Ray Alexander spiking the football. You know, Steve Floor throwing it up for grabs somewhat right there, watching for the outcome. He sees it tipped a couple times. Yes, hands in the air, no problem, easy touchdown pass. That's uh, worth one more look, isn't it? <laughs> you can see two Bengal defenders in the area, but a great leap by Ray Alexander. How he caught that football, I'll never know. You know, at the end of that play, the only battle was between Alexander and the football. 38-17, Dallas gets back up on the board. Coming up next on most of these NBC stations, stay tuned for the second half of our football doubleheader. Most of you will see the Denver Broncos battle the New Orleans Saints in a crucial game for two playoff hopefuls, plus regional action, so check local listings for the game in your area. 38-17, Cincinnati with 4.46 remaining here at Texas Stadium. Well, both, we... both Cowboy touchdowns have been sensational. A great run by Walker from 11 yards, and then that tremendous athletic catch by Ray Alexander. Bengals send their hands team on the field as they're alert for the onside kick. Always exciting. Here it is. Ruzek. Ball was caught by the Bengals. Lost, and the Cowboys have it at midfield. It appeared Collinsworth had it initially. The ball was high, and the massive bodies hit him, and the ball popped loose. Now they're trying to unpile. It's Brian Diossi who has it, or Steve Diossi has it, rather. There's Steve Diossi, a special teams player and a good one for the Cowboys. Here it is again, Ruzek with the onside kick. First of all, it was a good kick. Watch gets the big the bounce. Gets the great bounce right here. The ball goes high. Collinsworth has it for a minute. Well, he doesn't have it. He never, never, had, he never had the grasp of it when the wave of body hit. That's one team you don't want to be on. You're down there, the game is always on the line. You know you're going to get smeared by somebody. So, Landry's Cowboys get the big turnover on the onside kick, and they've got the ball at the 50-yard line with 4.41 left to go. Three wide receivers into the game. Haven't seen Herschel Walker in a long time. It's been Clack in that backfield. Here's Pelora, and here comes Clack. First down. Taken out by Dixon inside the Cincinnati 40 to the 38-yard line. Cowboys on the move, and we move around the league. They're in overtime in Buffalo. That's tied 6-6. Houston on their way to a win in the Astrodome. Cleveland won. Minnesota wins. 12-3. Indianapolis had won five in a row. Green Bay loses to Detroit. Wayne Fonts might not be the interest coach, right? <laughs> Late games have started now. Saints lead over Denver 7-0, and the Eagles over the Giants 7-0. NFC Eastern Division well up for grabs there as the Eagles try and cash in. Here comes Clark. Down to the 20-yard line. Daryl Clark, the third-year running back out of Arizona State. On 
two big plays. He caught the pass, and now a big run up the gut. And Darrell with only three carries going into this football game, but again goes roaring through the line like Herschel Walker. 38-17. Let's see if they can get it back into the end zone. Pelura racing around. It's caught by Irvin. Cincinnati Bengals team after he made that catch. But let's take another look. He slips coming off the line of scrimmage. Lewis Phillips has inside help, but he gets in front of David Fulcher. That's the man that's supposed to take away the inside play. Now watch the run. Miss tackle. Miss tackle. Turns it up. Tripped up. Can't quite stick it in. Great individual effort by Michael Irvin. Barney Bussey brought him down inside the one. There's Irvin. 319 left. First and goal. Now the play clock showed nothing. They had run down to zero. Pelura saw that. There it is. That was at zero when he called the timeout, but I don't think the officials saw that unless the clock wasn't set properly. Well, one thing, the quarterback does not have to raise up his hands to call timeout, as Sam White is saying that. Most of the time, you just you can, the officials right in front of the umpire, you can say timeout, timeout, and then he'll give it to you. But Sam White said there was no time left on the clock. When they were up at the line of scrimmage, before he called timeout, the clock was already down to zero. Then Pelour looked up and immediately called the timeout. The official gave it to him, and there was no flag thrown. Well, one of the things I learned as a quarterback when you're there, if you bring your hands away from center to call timeout and somebody jumps, you can be called for illegal procedure. So it's almost best sometimes to leave your hands there, give the voice signal to the official that you want timeout, and then go ahead and put him up when he's giving you the timeout. Now, whether that happened or not, I don't know. Sam's saying, hey, I'm telling you, according to my watch, they were late starting that play. Certainly the Bengals don't want to take any chances. I mean, they don't want to let this thing get out of hand and blow one when they've got a commanding lead with just over three minutes to go here. I think Sam getting a little bit nervous on the sideline. I am not going to charge Dallas with that timeout. There's confusion with the, the clock, the down clock at this end of the field. So there's no charge on the time. All right, you heard that? clock on the ready. There was some problems, he's saying, with the clock down at this end of the field, right behind the Bengal defense, so now the Cowboys don't even get charged with that timeout. The best of all worlds. Yeah, from inside the one, Pelour, throwing, touchdown! Gordon Chandler, the tight end! Well, the Cowboys coming out on first and goal at the one yard, I come out throwing the football, I think that's what you have to do. You can't waste time off the clock by having times to get in, you use up a lot of time, come out throwing, and they complete it for the touchdown. There you see it again, the play action fake. Steve Ford looking to his right, coming back over the middle as he finds Thornton Chandler for the touchdown. Ruzek for the extra point, Chandler to the sideline, and the high fives everywhere. It's good. And it's now 38-24. There's a flag down, though, on the kick. But the Dallas offense coming to life late in this football game. It's against Dallas, as you saw it. Tripping, number 54 on the offense. 10 yard penalty, repeat the try. Don Randy White. So now it becomes kind of like a long, well, a little bit longer. It's like a field goal try now, is what I'm trying to say. Randy White arguing on the call. But my feet aren't that big to trip anybody. So the snap will come now from over the 10 at about the 12 and a half yard line. And Ruzek's got a little work to left to be done out of the hold of Pelora. It's like a 30-yard field goal now. But just for one point. Boy, he 
just got that through. That just got around that upright, and he knows it. Well, that puts the score 38-24. As we'll take one more look at the touchdown. But again, set up with a play action fake by Steve Pallor. The clock going across the line of scrimmage. He's looking all over for somebody. He finally finds Thornton Chandler in the back of the end zone. Knew exactly where he was. Didn't get too close. We had to worry about his feet. Stayed about a yard and a half, two yards from the end line. And that's all it took. Coming up next on most of these NBC stations, stay tuned. Second half of our doubleheader ready to come your way. Most of you are going to see Denver battle the Saints in a crucial game for two playoff hopefuls or San Diego and the Rams in Anaheim. That's all next right here on NBC, right after the Cowboys and Bengals finish up. Sam White still not satisfied with that call by the officials down in the goal line where they call timeout. But now it goes down, the hands team is back onto the field for Cincinnati, and you know it's going to be an onside kick. Sam's assistant's getting over there and pulling him back. Let's take a look at the Bengal report card for this game. Boomer size, and he's going to get back out on the field. That's what Boomer did on the day. 205 yards, three TDs. James Brooks, 146 yards. He had 121 at halftime. Holman, two touchdown passes as the tight end reappears, and Jim Breach with the field goal. Big offensive day by Cincinnati, led by Boomer Esaias, who's having a fine year as he leads all AFC quarterbacks. Onside kick number two now. Number one works for the Cowboys. Cincinnati's on this one. I don't the ball never I don't, went did it 10, 10 yards. yards anyway. I don't, and plus the Cowboys were trying to stay out of the way of it as Ruzek kicked it more towards his team and they were trying to avoid the ball hitting them and I don't think it did go 10 yards. It looked like they, they sent about six players down along the sideline. The ball never got out in front of them and kind of got kind of got stuck in the pile. The legal touch of the kick before it went 10 yards. On the first onside kick, it is five yards and re-kick. That's automatic. Should it happen on the second, there's an option for the receiving team. There you see the kick going towards the sideline. The Cowboys trying to avoid it, but it touches someone's leg in there. The illegal touch before it goes 10 yards. Well, I bet Cincinnati would just rather have the ball. Which, if it happens again, and instead of going, they will have that option. Again. No choice in the first one. If it would have gone out of bounds, they could have taken the ball at the spot. Oh, look at this. That's hitting three Bengals and going out of bounds. And they'll have the ball. Three of them went after the ball. Boom, boom, boom. And they finally just knocked it out of bounds. Well, the Bengals will take possession now. There you see it going down. The ball going there. There's one Bengal that touches it. Chris Collinsworth leaps for it. Now, Stanford Jennings, Jennings. Doing, playing a little volleyball, hitting it out of bounds, but he knew that the players were coming in. He said, all they want to do is get this football out of bounds. Cowboys, quarterbacks, they used two. Sweeney started, Pelora relieved. That's what they did today. Herschel Walker, 131 yards rushing and one touchdown. The rookie Irvin looked good receiving. And Ruzak, one for one. And some pretty exciting outside kicks, too. <laughs> James Brooks, the Cowboys will immediately call a timeout. 2.42 left. And according to the scoreboard now, they'll have one left. Buffalo has won the AFC Eastern Division in overtime. Without a touchdown, they do it over the Jets. 9-6. Scott Norwood kicks the winning field goal. Houston has won. Cleveland wins. The Bears win. And the Vikings in another game that had nothing but field goals in it. Where'd all the offense go, Ken? I don't know. Kansas City beats Seattle. New Orleans jumps out at home over Denver. And the Giants tie up the Eagles 7-7. San Diego and the Rams 14-7 in the first quarter. And the Raiders and Falcons right now 0-0. 38-24 here, Bengals and Cowboys. You'll be getting your second game of the doubleheader right after this one. With 2.42 left. We had talked earlier about Kirk Schoenert warming up, but two quick scores by the Dallas Cowboys. Boomer Esiason is going to finish this one up for the Bengals today. 
Ball is at the 44-yard line. Riggs in motion. Brooks back to work. Tackled by Bill Bates. And the Cowboys call another timeout. Just when it looked like James Brooks had an opening, Bill Bates comes up and makes the big play. All right, now it's time for the Most Valuable Player Award sponsored by Budweiser. Today's MVP is James Brooks from the Cincinnati Bengals. Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVPs selected in today's game. Congratulations, James Brooks. Here we see one of James Brooks' big plays of the day as he takes the ball to the outside, cuts it up, gets a couple of good blocks from his teammates, then he turns on the Jets, and nobody's going to catch him. Big afternoon for James Brooks. That was a 51-yard touchdown run by James Brooks. Thought he might get a little bench time here, but Cowboys came back into the game. Remember, coming up after the key, uh, at the conclusion of this game, you'll be getting your second game. Some of you, the Broncos and Saints. The rest of you will get San Diego and the Rams from Anaheim. At the conclusion of the Bengals and Cowboys, 2.35 left here at Texas Stadium. Third down and eight. Oh, boy, what a mess that play was. Collinsworth jumped off, didn't get flagged for it. Clock didn't start, snap came up late, ball fell down. Looked like several of the Bengals moved in the interior of the line and not a smooth way to try to run out the clock if you're the Bengals. Looked like exhibition game number one of the season. You know, the thing is with the 45 second clock now, the advantage really is to the team in the lead because they can use up more time off the clock as the game comes down to a conclusion. Now, this isn't really a good finish for Cincinnati. They played very well until the late stages of this game, and you don't have a real good feeling about the way you finish. Well, I, I think the offense feels very good because they haven't been on the field lately, so they finished strong today. But the defense, you know, a couple of question marks as Dallas gets a couple of quick scores to end it up. Now we'll go right down to the two-minute warning. There it is, two minutes left to go. And we'll be back with the final two minutes here from Texas Stadium right after this timeout. For Cincinnati, just when you thought it was going to be an easy day, they were ahead 38-10. Now it's 38-24 uh, as the Cowboys have come on with a couple of late touchdowns, but they're still only two minutes away from the win. Well, a good day for the Bengals offense. They did a lot of different things. They threw the ball well. They ran it effectively. James, James Brooks was the big afternoon. And Dallas, a positive side, they've had trouble scoring points all year. It came a little bit too late, but they finally got the touchdown. Boy, give the Cowboys some credit. They hung in there. They fought hard, and they got those late touchdowns that added some spark so they can build towards Thursday's Thanksgiving Day special against the Houston Oilers. Cowboys are 14-5-1 on Thanksgiving Day. Very, very tough here. Sam Weich has been ticked off since that play clock ran out when Dallas was going for their last touchdown and the penalty was not whistled down. Dallas called for a timeout and the officials didn't even charge him for that because they said there was a problem with the clock. Fullhag punched the ball for the Bengals. It hits it about the 19-yard line, and it rolls out at the 17, and the Cowboys get it back with a minute 54 left, but they have no timeouts. I... Steve Pallor back out onto the field. Boy, the Saints off quickly against Denver. Some of you will be joining that game in the first quarter down in the Superdome where the Saints are super tough. And Philadelphia and the Giants tied 7-7. Other games just getting started. San Diego with Mark Vlasic at quarterback at his first start last week. That would be a big upset. And the some of our audience will be going out to watch the Chargers and Rams. Atlanta and the Raiders scoreless. Steve Pallor back to pass. Out of the pocket. Look at Crumbry try and chase down Steve Pallor, but he never gave up, did he? 69 was rumbling across that field. Then finally said, ah, oh, heck, he's going to go out of bounds anyway. <laughs> Just not quite fast enough to make the big play on Steve Pallor, but he was trying awful hard. Here we go, Ray Alexander as he comes off the line of scrimmage against Ricky Dixon. He gets down there. There's a big void in the zone as the Bengals are playing loose. He's waving his hands. Floor just doesn't have a chance to see him. And they got another wide open Cowboy receiver that can't get the football. Four receivers into the game now for the Cowboys. Pallor ran for a first down, a minute 46 left. 
He has to unload this one, and he does. And Daryl Clack makes the catch out to the 38-yard line. And the Cowboys hustle back up to the line of scrimmage again. They're out of timeout. Clock running a minute 25 now left to Lure. And they get him. Looks like it's Jason Buck or David Bright. It's Buck. Buck got him from the outside. And for Jason Buck, four and a half sacks now on the year. He's kind of the Bengals' designated pass rusher. Comes in the obvious passing situations to play defensive end. Cowboys cannot stop the clock with a timeout. They're out of timeouts. He unloads for Kelvin Martin. Incomplete. Pass was delivered short down at the 45 of Cincinnati. 109 left. As Kelvin Martin almost makes the sliding catch going across the field. Tom Landry trying to decide what he wants to call in a situation like this. Hoping that they come up with a big play. Some sort of miraculous finish. Kelvin Edwards back into the lineup. Sam White still talking with the officials. He's been known to get on the officials every once in a while. There he is. He's just not giving it up. Wants to make sure they understand his point of view. And he says, I think you do now. Huh? We'll, we'll make up now. Yeah. A minute nine left. Here's Pallor back to pass on third down. Out it goes to Clack. He didn't, did not get the first down, but he goes out of bounds and stops the clock at the 45-yard line. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer of NBC Football is Ted Nathanson. The coordinating producer of NFL Live is John J. Filippelli. Today's game was produced by George Finkel, directed by Bob Levy. NFL Live produced by Rick Diamond and Tom Roy. NFL Live directed by Mary Buta Lamusio. Technical director Skip Thresh and Richard Sansevu. Fourth down and three. Pallure trying to get out of there. Didn't get out of there. Bengals on top of him. Jason Buck, David Grant there with under a minute to go. 55 seconds. Cincinnati will get the ball back and just run it out now. And you see the old fall down formation by the Cincinnati Bengals. And now you can light up the cigar officially. Tom Landry, under fire. Team about to lose their eighth game in a row. It signed a three-year contract. Felt it was a rebuilding project. Three years to get things turned around, and he doesn't want to leave the Cowboys when the team is down. And they are a young football team. We got a chance to talk with Tom yesterday, but a lot of young talent that needs to learn how to win. And obviously they got behind the Cincinnati Bengals who were on a little bit of a roll this afternoon. But I think uh, things will be brighter in Dallas. One thing Landry said yesterday that was interesting, he said that the worst thing that happened to his team was the finish last year, that they ended up in second place in the NFC Eastern Division because of tiebreakers. They were tied with a number of people, but ended up as the second place team and got an awful tough schedule down the wire. He said, we're playing all playoff teams this year. He said, that's very tough on a, on a young football team. About the longest losing streak in Dallas history since 1960. That streak at that time went to 10. Dallas now at 8. Sam White is a winner today. As the Bengals are on their way back to Cincinnati, they'll play Buffalo next week in what should be an AFC showdown. Cincinnati, after losing in Kansas City last week, wanted to win on the road, and those numbers say they did quite effectively. The final score, the Cincinnati Bengals 38. The Dallas Cowboys, 24. Stay tuned for the NBC Sports second game of the doubleheader. You'll see one of these games next. Denver, New Orleans, San Diego, and the Rams. For Ken Anderson, this is Jim Donovan. Goodbye from Texas Stadium.